gentlemen, and welcome to, I think this is actually week 32. 32 of them. 32 of them of Chicken Bone Alley. Brought to you by SRI Performance, Stock Car Steel, and Draco Springs. Absolutely right, man. I'm Sterling. How y'all doing? <laughs> I'm David. <laughs> 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 it's been a long night already, uh, man. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a good one. I'm excited. I'm actually excited. Absolutely I'm right. I'm excited. It's gonna be a cool, cool episode, mm-hmm. people. Cool episode. One of the, one of the better, one of the best, one of the better ones. One of the. We, hey, we're, we're we're growing, so that's a good thing. Moving on up. That's right. What's wrong? With I don't that? know where we're moving up to, but I mean, we just. We talk to cool people now. Well, I'm already on the second floor of the house. I can't go yeah, to higher. Can't, we can sit on the roof. <laughs> we can sit on the roof. It's a little chilly down there. <laughs> Finally. Thank God. Thank God. I tell you what. It was 48 degrees when I left this morning. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell you what. I went uh, Saturday. Um, buddy Shay Lane. Well, let me t- go back and tell you a story about this. <laughs> I've, uh, I've helped in with a race car for... A few years. He typically drove either a, uh, what they consider a Challenger or either a late model down here. Asphalt car. Asphalt car. Asphalt, yeah. And uh, he drove it either Timmonsville, mm-hmm. Lawrence Motor Speedway, or uh, Dillon Motor Speedway. One of the two. And so, I've helped him for, you know, over the years. We've gone to a bunch of races together. And, uh, well, last year we ran one race and he decided he wasn't going to run no more. So, went on, went on, went on. Well, this is the very first last year. We go over to Florence Motor Speedway the other week and he's sitting in the stands. And me and Sterling was down in the pits. So, I called him. Called Shay. And, uh. I was just picking with him, you know, talking about seeing what they was up to and seeing what they was talking about up up, up top in the stands. Well, anyway, he said, hey, man, I got me another car. <laughs> <laughs> he had the fever. He had the fever. Yeah, he got the fever. So he wouldn't plan on really doing nothing with it until next year. Well, it sat there and shot for a couple of days, and they couldn't stand it. They had to get it together. So we went to Dillon Motor Speedway this past Saturday. And, uh, man, I'm going to tell you what. It was, I don't know, it was what, mid upper 60s? Mm-hmm. And then people in the stands had broke out big old jackets and blankets. They wasn't ready for that. It went 98 to 60. <laughs> it was chilly. It was cool. Yeah. Quite cool out there. Yeah. So. Tell you what, speaking of cool, we decided, well, we decided like a month ago to, to uh, go from Georgetown uh, to Charleston in the uh, boat trip. And, I mean, that's that's like 70 miles roughly by water. It was a good little ride. I mean, it's a nice ride. We've been planning it out, planning it out, and we kept looking at the weather, and it's, oh, it's looking worse and worse. And then Hurricane Sally comes through like midweek and drops seven, eight inches of rain on us. And, oh, yeah. And it, it wasn't looking pretty. Um and the weather was cold. It, it, it was just, it wasn't the best of, <laughs> of weather for a boat trip. It was about like my birthday. Yeah. You know, it was supposed to be hot, but all of a sudden it was 60 some degrees. Yeah. On June 13th, which don't yeah. make sense. But, weird. so yeah, we get out there and uh, we, we we made the best of it. Uh, good fun ride. We went we went to Shim Creek and uh, docked up, ate us a nice little at Water's Edge. Uh, anybody that's around that area, go check out Water's Edge. Pretty cool place. Uh, sit on the water right there and uh, have you some good seafood or smoked wings or whatever you want i actually had smoked wings so wasn't quite as good as hooters i will say that just because i'm biased to hooters and if hooters is listening again we uh work for smoked wings that's all we do that's it that's all just smoke wings it's not we'll asking take, a lot. if you want to narrow it down anymore we'll probably just take texas barbecue that's it <laughs> so, <laughs> that's it. I mean, I like some the uh, uh, was it Parmesan garlic every now and then. But, yeah, but man, but just, I, I mean, you can't beat the Texas barbecue. Can't do it. So, so anyway, so we did that. Came back. It was good. Uh, long day for sure. It was about a three hour trip one way. So it was fun. But um, Billy Gonzalez. Three. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, it was good. We got to see the uh, Charleston Harbor there and the uh, the uh, whatever it is, the fighter boats and no, yeah, the, whatever all that is over there. Pretty neat. But um, anyway, so we did that, came back, got back late Sunday, cleaned the boat and did nothing. Well, sun- Sunday we went down to the lake ourselves. We didn't do nothing down there because it was cold. But my mama's birthday was uh, Monday, so we went down there Sunday because you know everybody got to work on Monday. So we went down there Sunday and grilled some steaks, ate some steaks. Nothing wrong with that. And I cooked grass on Tuesday. On a weekday. On a weekday. I'm surprised. Can't I'm, believe it. I'm proud of me. <laughs> I'm proud of me. <laughs> I'm proud of <laughs> me. Absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so going from that, man, we got a stacked show today. Stacked. But before we get into it, I actually want to do something here real quick. Hold on. Let me uh let me get out the chair real fast. We got a delivery came in. Special package. Oh god. All right, here we go. From Mr. Kale Maben. He uh he decided to uh send us some stuff here. I got it open here and uh Kale's a, a fan of the show. And I'll tell you, tell you something about him real fast. He sent me some messages and uh forty nine years old. This year was his first year racing in a well, period, but he decided to give him a legend car, dirt legend car. Sweet. That's pretty awesome. So, Absolutely. anyway, we're going to open this box here. He told us he was sending us some stuff, so let's see what let's see what he actually, what he sent us. I cut it open already, so that wouldn't take that long. Cool, we got a couple hats there. The Richardson hats at that, yeah. man. The best, the best Absolutely right. You can't go wrong with Richardson hats. And, and some t-shirts, some t-shirts. Man, what's up with that? Sweet. All right. What's it say on them? Ohio Valley Legend Car Series. Sweet. Man, that's cool. Absolutely right, man. Pretty cool. Hats and shirts say that. Man, we do sure appreciate that, that man. awesome, Kale. And uh, I told him the other day I, I'm sending him some stickers. Um, and the problem was is we're about out of stickers. <laughs> Wait, wait, I got a couple more stashed back. Right, well, we're gonna I'm gonna have show to steal you. yours. Yeah, we're gonna shoot some his way for sure. Put on that race car. Gonna we'll get him on his car. Kale again, we appreciate it, dude. And uh let y'all know something else about him. This was his first year. I don't know if I said it just him. It was his first year. Anyway, he finished eighth in point standings at his in his series there. So that was a uh, that's pretty stout for your first year. Oh, absolutely, man. Definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad to see that, and uh, glad to see he listens, and he definitely pays attention, man. He listens to all the shows, and uh, that's really cool. That was really cool, because he sends us messages all the time, you know, talking back to us about things that we talked in the show, and uh, that's, that's exactly what we want. Absolutely. The more we can get, the better, so again. More input. Yeah, Cal, we do sure appreciate it, bud, and uh, we'll be rooting you on for sure. Most definitely. Well, cool deal. Well, before we get any much farther, I'm going to tell you all real quick about Shay since I did go with him. He put some stickers on the car. Um, another uh, Chicken Bone Alley driver there. Well, he, uh, like I said, this is the first time he got in a car in a year and a half. About two years since he had run over at Dillon Motor Speedway. Um, he, and, and it's a brand new car to him, so we... Worked and worked and worked and worked and worked on it. Fought the car a little bit most of the day. But anyway, still brought it home fifth place. Hey. That ain't bad for the first time. And, and, and it was clean coming home, so that's important too. So definitely over there dealing. That's 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 a lot to be proud of. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, cool. Well, what else we got? We got a lot. Got a, lot. <laughs> a lot. So for us to be uh talking around for too long so i'm carry this thing on for a long time so instead of hearing us talk we got some uh pretty pretty big names uh called in this week so it's a lot for us to be proud of for sure to have them uh be a part of our show and for them to take the time to come on with us um 
but uh i think y'all definitely be uh be glad and glad to hear it for sure definitely so and uh we're recording this as usual on a wednesday night but we had a call in on monday so uh here it is Ladies and gentlemen, on the phone with us now, brought to you by SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel, a man that we've been wanting to get on here for quite a while, but they've had a busy summer. Sure have. It is the high side tickler, Kyle Strickler. Kyle, what's going on, buddy? Oh, just um, getting back after it. Just I got got home uh, early this morning from the 18-hour drive back home from I-80 and getting the car washed up and um, everything cleaned up and head back out to Brownstown this weekend. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, I mean, how how long uh, how long were y'all out on the road there? Did y'all stay out the whole time? Yeah, we stayed out there from um, uh, from Eldora on to uh, uh, on to Fairbury and then and then uh, went out to Nebraska there at I-80, so uh, we were out there on the road the whole time. Whew. Makes for some some long yeah. weeks in the toter there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's glad to get home yeah, for sure. Especially yeah, with having two uh, having two kids and my wife back home and uh, uh, my son's four, my daughter is uh, is nine, so they um, they miss me dearly. So it's good to be back home for a few days before we head back out. Oh, I bet so. Yeah, absolutely. Bet so, well, Kyle, I wanted to. We, we, we're kind of a podcast where we try to give more of a, I, I guess you say, fans' perspective on a lot of things here. And we, I don't know if you know this, I think you do probably, but uh, in our opinion, I know there hadn't been a whole lot of fans at a lot of the tracks here lately, but, man, you have come on and really become basically what we would call a people's champ regardless. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, Definitely. And, yeah, well, that means a lot to me for sure. Well, that's cool, man. So so what we want to do is, you know, we look out there and try to, you know, we're trying to find things about Kyle Strickler. So basically, you know, we just want to ask you about you, not not all necessarily racing per se, but just just more about you so the fans can connect with you. So first off, Kyle, how, how old are you? Um, I'm 37 years old. 37 years old. So you're right around our age there. Um, you are originally from Pennsylvania, correctly? Correct. Yep, I'm from uh, Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania, and did a lot of um, uh, the Northeast Big Block Modifieds and the Northeast Center Steer Modifieds before uh, before I moved down to North Carolina in in uh, 2006. Good deal. Awesome. Awesome. Where'd you go to school at up there? I uh, went to Wilson High School. Wilson High School. Another quick question for you here. With, uh, other than racing and everything, what what was your actual first job? Um, I worked uh, at a grocery store. It was actually um, up in Pennsylvania. There it was there's a lot of uh, uh, Mennonites and Amish there, so they. Uh, I worked at a uh, like a little Mennonite um, grocery store, and um, they had. Uh, they had some great food in there and a lot of different food that, um, you know, they don't have it. Some of it's starting to branch out now. A lot of the pastries and everything that were famous up in Pennsylvania, that area, um, have made it down this way. But, um, yeah, that was my first job. A um, bagger and uh, um, run the cash register at, um, at Weaver's was the name of this, uh, the grocery store. Cool. Well, um, Man, as far as you uh, coming down to North Carolina in 2006, what 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 drove that? Was it just racing purpose to, to try to come down here and 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 I'm gonna say not make it yeah. better, but that's, yeah, that's what, definitely what what drove me to come down here. We would I was racing um, uh, in Pennsylvania, and I had a uh, like a tour ride, and then I had a guy that I was driving for in New Jersey um, at Bridgeport. Uh, and we would go to, uh, I'd go back and forth and I was working at a, um, a chassis company, Speed Palace in Jersey, um, that built the Northeast modified cars. And, um, and then one of my, one of my buddies, um, that was actually on my, 
on my uh, race team, Wes Lape, he had moved down to uh, to North Carolina, and then and we've had a lot of people from our area move down there. And Ben Hat was down here, and um, uh, Wes Lape, I think he works at Gibbs, I, Gibbs, I believe now. Uh, but he had, he had moved down and was working at a little fab shop. And um, my uh, racing career or racing operations, both of them weren't looking real great for the next year. Um, kind of out of money and um things weren't going great and i was ready for a change and uh i called you know my buddy west that had moved down and uh he said that they were you know looking for people i think he had just got hired at roush then and they needed somebody to kind of fill his position at the fab shop he was working at and um i uh was in the right i guess mindset or right part in my life that i wanted to change and um talked to the guy that um was pat Beatty. it was leading edge fabrication in concord and um i uh talked to him on the phone and got hired over the phone and loaded myself up and moved down the next week <laughs> wow that is cool well i you know from from when i started noticing and hearing about kyle strickler and and um and and following you uh was back a couple of years ago um uh, we used to always go to the dirt car nationals and the world championships in charlotte there and we're not too far from that area and um never forget seeing you and uh and old david streamy getting together um tearing up y'all stuff and and you getting out of the car and taking care of business there uh so i've got I, I, honestly i just that's when i started following you and and um picked up on all the things you do so uh um how did that go and and do y'all have a relationship going forward from that um yeah i mean that was that was a, a big deal especially on the the internet and everything and um i mean the funny part about that was it wasn't even the big race it was in the all-star race but that was definitely the most exciting thing that happened um <laughs> you know a lot of people were i think everybody doesn't even remember that i won the um you know the big race but uh, right. uh that was in an all-star race and um yeah there was definitely a lot of prior history between me and and david and um i mean i had worked for him and and uh he had helped me out when i was working at um rusty wallace's and Stephen wallace was driving the, the the bush cars and and um you know then I, I met david when he was racing there and then he wanted to get into the kind of the dirt world and and uh uh, came to me and had helped me out and then we were doing the you know lethal chassis thing together and um it wasn't uh wasn't totally bad blood i guess at first um but then things kind of just progressed that way to where um you know if you're with somewhere and you kind of feel like you got the short end of the stick you definitely want to outrun each other and um one thing led to another we had kind of got into it a little bit throughout that year and um being in front of the hometown crowd with all of our sponsors and supporters there uh it was it was definitely um uh, me versus him and and we wanted to do whatever we had to do to to uh to beat him and our car was so good and i think i'd come from like 18th or something to passing him there for uh i think second and um yeah i just uh you know he was looking at it the same way too that that he had all his supporters and sponsors and people that were there for him so he sure sure as hell didn't want to uh to make have me make him look bad and uh, everything kind of came to a head and i slid him there and just barely cleared him and when he was coming back by me he turned right and junked my stuff and <laughs> um i usually don't get too fired up from that stuff but i, I was uh, i was extremely mad there and i don't even really remember getting out of the car and 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 going over uh, to man. him i remember when i got there but it's like it was uh, it all happened so fast but um yeah there's a lot of people that still remember that and i still get that video sent to me every once in a while <laughs> <laughs> well, that is cool and 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 you know like you said you won a big race i think i think you gained a lot of fans just by that <laughs> and personally my, me being one of them starting well, in well i know uh, myself it, it, I, you, I was a huge supporter all of a sudden then because i tried to shake david streamy's hand one time and he yeah. literally told me he didn't shake hands yeah so i don't shake hands I told him he didn't win races either so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I thought yeah, it was pretty good. it's a uh, uh, part of it and um 
I mean, he's he's good at running uh, the business end of it, and and I think that that was some of what caused the the uh, the tensions there was, um, you know, it's hard when you're both racing, um, you know, when you're both on the same team, and he was obviously funding a lot of my stuff and was helping me out financially there, and um, but we were winning all the races, and um, it can be really tough when. Um, when you're you're both trying to win and and we were out running them, it can be really hard on a guy's ego. So right. I think that kind of was the uh, what helped what on his end at why he was he was so frustrated and didn't want me to outrun him. Right, I completely understand that. Well, running a uh, starting a and, and starting and running a modified car uh, is, 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 is on your own has got to be unbelievably expensive and. Um, now into super late models uh that's another thing i like about you and in in, in in your team um seem like y'all do a lot on your own and 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 bust your butt and uh it pays off so i i guess my biggest question is is you know what drew you from modifieds from coming up i mean from up north moving down here running modifieds into uh now the super late models uh, i mean it's I mean, it, it's changed so much just in the time that I moved uh, moved down here. You know, I, I moved down here because I wanted to get into racing and wanted to pursue my racing career. And, um, you know, when I first uh, first came down here, um, you know, it was in 2006, January 2006, and I didn't drive a, you know, a full-size race car uh, until the very end of 2009 and then full-time um, in 2010. So when I first moved down here, I mean, the only thing I got to to, to race was um, some of the mini outlaws out at Millbridge. You know, right. a couple of my buddies had them, so I'd go out there and we'd just kind of mess around with them. But, um, you know, it, it was it was expensive back then, but nothing like what it is now. It's crazy how expensive <laughs> stuff is. But then we just had, um, I was driving for George Eisenhower, and we'd run East Lincoln in Carolina Friday, Saturday night. And. Uh, he had an F-150 pickup and an open trailer, and we did it out of my my uh, two bay garage at my house. And um, you know, we were on sixty dollar Pro shocks and steel headed uh, motors, and you know, the the technology has come so far um, to where back then I think uh, there wasn't a lot of people focused on building modified and or late models in this area. But right. now it's completely exploded, and I think the best cars in the country come out of uh, come out of North Carolina is modified then, um, you know, and late models. Right. So it's uh, it's changed so much, but the you know the the cost of going from uh, from modified we had a um, extremely uh, except, successful and um, well funded modified team uh, to go into the late models were it's almost not a, not a drop in the bucket to, to um, what it takes to work or what some of these big guys are, are big, you know, unlimited funded teams are spending. So right. um, all the great people that we have that have helped me that I've, you know, built up or have jumped on board throughout my modified career um, are, you know, most of them are still with me on the late model stuff, but, um, and a lot of them had stepped up and and are are helping me out a ton, and I couldn't uh, couldn't do it without them. You know, like Absolutely. balancing grading uh, is you know one of the uh, biggest sponsors or the most help on um, on my late model. He was my first sponsor, and so it's awesome to have him still around. And then obviously, uh, um, stock car steel and SRI beef tips was one of my first friends I met down here, and then. Uh, Greg Fernelli and I become friends and he's helped me out from day one. And, um, you know, it's, it, it goes on and on the people that, uh, um, you know, jump on board and, and a lot of my product sponsors, we've, I've got towards, you know, towards the end of, uh, my modified days and, and they have stuck with me and, um, into the late mile stuff, you know, like where's machine and, and guys like that, that, um, that I wouldn't be where I'm at now if it wasn't for them helping me out back when um, we first got going in the Modifieds. Right. Good That's deal, awesome. man. Well, I wanna, I, and I meant to ask you this a little bit earlier, uh, real fast. 
Where did when and where was the first thing you actually ever raced? Um, down here or first time I ever raced ever? Just first time you ever raced ever. Um, I actually ran go karts at a road course. Um, it was a place called Oroville in Pennsylvania, and uh, I ran like a half a season. Uh, I was ten years old and um, at an asphalt road course. And then the next year, uh, when I never won a race there, and um, I liked it. Of course, I I mean I had a blast doing it. But the next year we got um, uh, like a dirt track go kart, and and um, it was a twister chassis, and yeah. went and ran um, Snyder'sville uh, up by the Poconos, and then ran um, uh, yeah, what was the name of the other track? Uh, I can't remember what it what it was now, and um, ended up racing the the uh, the oval track dirt stuff and fell in love with that. And um, Path Valley was the other track I used to go to, um, and fell in love with that. And then um, been dirt track oval racing since then. There you go. We actually got a uh, we got one of them out there. We got a twister sitting out in the shop right now. <laughs> Old twister, <laughs> old, old twister sitting on ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. I remember those days. Learn, learn to blister, ride a twister. There it is. <laughs> there it is. That's it. Because <laughs> uh, we we was always fighting against them. I was on the I was uh, running Phantom Racing chassis, and Sterling was over there on the Shadow. So, right. Sure. Yeah. Sure we, enough, we, we kept it competitive. Yes. Sir, but anyway, right. man, well, yep. let's let's move on from there. All right. Well, we'll go back. And actually, I want to go back to little father in the year earlier in the year the first the stream not the dream the stream as they like to call it at eldor i mean you were coming on before then but then that's when it seemed like boom there's kyle strickler he run up front and i mean was running good what what where was the and i'm not gonna say turn around because you were you know you were up there it just seemed like all of a sudden there there you were yeah, I mean it's it's um, a lot of it's uh, performing on a big stage. You know, Eldora to me is um, is the my favorite racetrack in the country, and um, we've won a lot of big races at uh, at Eldora with the modified, and um, got a chance to run that uh, you know the truck race there two years in a row. And um, anything, anytime I can get a chance to race something at Eldora, I'm I'm, uh, I'm gonna jump on it for sure. But um, so we went when we were preparing to go to the to the stream. Um, you know, I I do uh, you know I, I get really excited and and uh, obviously we want to be prepared as as we can for any race. But there's a, it's always something special when we go to Eldora. So um, we had won you know two races for when I was driving for the Wells, um, and then had led 50 laps of the Dream when I was. Um, um, I was driving for the wells, and and uh, it kind of all set up. And when we rolled into Eldora, that uh, if we were going to get our first really big win, that would be the perfect place for it to happen. And it kind of all played out. And um, Eldora just really fits my style. And when you, anytime you win in anything at Eldora, everybody, you know, is going to know about it or hear about it. So right. we've won fifty thousand to win modified races. You know, that paid. You know that the Eldora race only paid ten, and I got way more attention for winning that ten thousand at Eldora than I did for <laughs> winning the fifty thousand at at Farley. So um, that was when I think people started, you know, saying, "Okay, well, let's see what what this guy can do," and and paying attention more on the late mile side of it. And then uh, we've had a bunch of you know good runs, decent runs, just not really one. I think we had like four second place finishes. Um, and then, um, you know, just kind of get, get rolling in this deal. And it's, I tell the guys all the time, we keep on positioning ourselves and put ourselves up front that the winds will start coming. That's oh, right. absolutely. That's right. Well, that moves us into, we'll go back to these last couple of weeks here. You know, and I know you've been asked about it a thousand times already, but going back to Eldora for the Intercontinental Classic, it was shaping up and lining up to be a, a, a good weekend for you and, and it was really good 
I mean, everything looked good. It was awesome. Oh my god, yeah. man! And, and, yeah, one and, uh, one lap short, <laughs> dude. I don't. We we were sitting here watching that race, and uh, like David said, I mean, you, you were all but dominated the whole weekend. Honestly, I mean, ran great all weekend up front consistent car looked great and then uh and then the, the big race <laughs> i just i i don't know man how in the world do you swallow that how do you do it that's tough yeah it makes it uh it made it really really tough uh, especially from the financial aspect of it because um you know fifty thousand uh fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money to uh to anybody but um you know, it could have really, really helped us, our program out to, um, just to buy the stuff we need to keep going. Right. Um, and to be that close, um, it's, I mean, it, it almost, I don't know if it hurts more or if it's more of a letdown when something like that happens, um, when it, it's kind of out of your control, you know, like if I would have went, went in there and smoked the fence or knock the deck out of it or cut the tire down from doing something that I made a mistake on. Right. Um, I wouldn't have anybody to be mad about it except for myself, you know, because I was the one that, that made the mistake. So you just live and you learn, you move forward. But I mean, I've ran those last five, la- five laps through my head, um, um, you know, a million times since then. And it's, um, it's so tough. You're going so fast there. And I think I ran over uh, a connecting rod out of, either um ken robinson or uh ricky wise's uh, uh motor right those are the last two cautions or last two um they didn't have a caution when when ricky's broke but um the last caution with eight to go was because ken robinson broke a motor and then they found the connecting rod on the back stretch after the races um people were walking around and just you know looking at the track and they found the connecting rod out of his motor um and that's where I, I think i cut it with two to go yep um but it's just hard to swallow i mean you're not it, it's so hard to see anything and you're so focused and for me to see a piece of metal there and um yeah. you know be able to miss it or you know i didn't i didn't feel myself hit it or didn't see it um i just felt the tire going soft with um you know two to go there um, and then on the white flag lap it was going really really soft and that was one I knew I was definitely wasn't going to make it all the way back around another lap with the tire that low. Right. Man, yeah. I'm telling you. That's tough. We, we were we were definitely rooting on, and I uh, couldn't believe that. I, I, I swear about, I could I think I about fell out of the seat when I saw that happen. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <sighs> I so wanted him to win. But that's, unfortunately, that's as Harry Gant like you to say, that that's racing. I mean, but. Yeah, it don't that's make, it don't, part of it. And it'll look. Like, you know the racing gods will uh give and take so um i'm you know trying to look at it from the positive it's over and done with and yeah it sucks and um i don't want to uh, hopefully i'm not looking back and pulling the shoulda woulda could have you know hopefully we'll go there and and eldor's you know means so much to me we'll go there we'll win the dream we'll go there we'll win the world 100 and then That'll just be a, a cool part of the story, That's right. you know. But um, there you go. Well, one um, one thing is move one, forward into the past. Of the past, absolutely. One thing is for sure, they knew you were there. I can promise you that. And uh, <laughs> for sure. And uh, and moving on yeah. from there, uh, I mean, the the uh, the dominating performances is just keeping on. So I'm, I love seeing it, man. That's awesome. It's so cool. So yeah, cool. you know, I, I caught some people's attention when uh, Scott Bloomquist calls me after the race and uh, talks to me for about 45 minutes. And, um, you know, he was really, really impressed about, the, you know, wow. how fast I was. And, um, you know, he could tell how much outdoor means means to me. And it was kind of uh, – he told me that I'll have uh, – if I keep on putting as much effort and, and passion into running good at Eldora that um, – I could have similar success that, that he has there, and, and he could tell that the place that place means so much to me, just like it does for him. So wow. that meant a lot to me to to catch his attention. And right. um, if I can do half the things that Bloomquest has done at Eldora, we'll be doing just fine. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely so. Absolutely. Well, then moving on from Eldora, 
y'all hit it over to Falls, Fairbury over there, and have a flat tire on the trailer. <laughs> A right rear flat tire, nonetheless. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How ironic. <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah, Come on. Exactly. Oh my God! Yeah, you can't, I couldn't you can't, believe it when that happened. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I said. I'm like, what are the chances? Ah, oh, no. But anyway, dude, then I sat there. I turned on Flow Racing, and. I'm watching qualifying and I'm like, good God, Kyle looks fast. And all of a sudden I hear track record. That thing was on a rail. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. I liked Fairbury a lot. And, um, you know, that was one of the places that we, I really liked going to in the modified, uh, getting a race against like Mike Harrison and, and those guys out there. They're, they're so good in that area. And, um, I've only raced there twice with, uh, with the modified and run second to Harrison, uh, both times. Wow. And um, with the, I knew our race car was really fast, and we go into, um, you know, into uh, Fairbury, and my first lap was decent, and it was still quick time, and I just was in the right mindset, and I said, we'll go in here and um, see if we can't get a little bit more, and and entered right on the cushion and drift right around there, and um ended up breaking the track record, which I didn't even know at the time, I, you know, the backstretch was just going absolutely crazy. And then everybody was running up to me before I even got to the scales, all the officials and everything. And they're like, you broke the track record, <laughs> which is, it was awesome. So yeah, um, a lot of this is, is momentum. And uh, we were just um, pretty determined after the Eldora deal to go and prove to everybody that it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't, um, uh, a one night deal that we just got lucky and, and we're fast and, you know, have one slip away. I wanted to, to show to everybody that um, our car is really good and, and, and we can run with these guys. Well, Kyle, I, and that's one thing that myself personally l love seeing about you because there's a lot of drivers out there, you know, they that close to winning at El door and all of a sudden tire blows or something like that. Just like what happened to you. And then, you know, they're just moping around, blah, 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 and whatever. But, no, you're determined to go back out there and, and, and put up big laps again just to show them. And, I, I, dude, that, I, I think that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, at the, uh, at the end of the day, I'm getting to do what I love to do. And um, I put a, a lot of heart and soul and effort into getting here. So, you know, if I get the opportunity and – to go out and race we're gonna try to make the best of it and um you know there is definitely guys that it it, it, it frustrates me or um or is is aggravating to me that when you see a guy that you would think that has you know has everything so to speak and they're kind of miserable you know right. and so i try to make the best of it make the most of it and and uh show the fans and and um you know the supporters of you know, short track racing, how passionate I am about it and uh, how much I really want to be there, you know, that I'm not taking it for granted. And um, I think that that's, a, you know, a lot of what leads into uh, into success. Absolutely. That's right, man. Well, you went into that race that night at, at Falls there and the bad luck strikes again. What actually, what actually happened <laughs> <Yeah>. there? <laughs> it, the racetrack was really fast up until the feature – it, you know, and it didn't slow down any, but then all of a sudden it got really, really rough. Yeah. Um, and the the mental end of running a late mile race versus the modified stuff is so different. Um, the modified deal, yeah, you know, it it was almost to the point where I've run so many of them where it almost came natural to me that I could just kind of do what I do, and um, and we had a lot of success for it. But there, you got to think way before you do in a late model. Um, and, uh, you know, I was trying to play my cards right there and make sure that I didn't, um, knock the deck out on, on lap five and, and, uh, Fairbury, it's really easy to get up into the wall and, and do that. So, um, I got to race in there with them guys and got past or went down and got alongside of Josh, uh, Richards for the lead there and, um, and took the lead. And then I drove down the next corner and I hit the, the hole, which trying to run around the bottom there, I thought that that would be the smoother way around, but. It uh, turns out it was way rougher down there and hit a huge hole and, and, uh, bent the J bar and, um, 
and then we were we were screwed from there. Just <laughs> they removed the rear end over like three inches, and um, we only made it a few more laps before it eventually knocked the drive shaft out. And, um, but I mean that one, that one was uh, you know obviously a lot less money. I we wanted to win that one. Yeah. Um, but that one, I felt like it wasn't really ripped away from me. I felt like, I, you know, if I didn't want to bend the J-bar, I shouldn't have drove through that hole. So um, right. that one was just, just part of it. And you live and you learn and move forward. Um, you know, and, and uh, it was complete opposite end of the spectrum of the, of the ordeal, but still kind of a, a, a luck deal. We just, we knew our race cars fast and we just got to keep on moving forward. And um, we were getting a lot of media attention and, and uh, social media love and um we figured if the race car is fast we better keep rolling on it and get her fixed back up and roll out the i-80 and and it's got to turn around sooner or later that's for sure well y'all sure as hell turned it around and hit it <laughs> yes sir because <laughs> uh that it, it y'all turned it around got it straight and put it back on the rail again man i mean that that's man that says a lot about y'all's team to me it does, and with the amount of people that we got doing and going on the road with us, it was, you know, it's just me, um, Vinny Gugliano, my my uh, crew chief, and then Trey Weaver has uh, been doing um, tires and helping out on on uh, anything else, and then uh, Colby Quick runs a crate car around the Carolinas. Um, he's been gone; he's only 16, so he had to fly out before I 80. Um, and go back to high school. So, um, <laughs> it kind of sucks for him. He, he was there for all the work and all the, um, struggles. And then as soon as he flies out, we go up to, um, uh, to I 80 and, and win the first night out. So, um, that, that had to be a little rough, rough for him, but, uh, he's still part of the team and, and I'm sure he'll be, be there for, for the wins that, that we got coming. And if we keep on doing what we're doing, I think we're going to win a, a good amount of races here in the near future. Definitely so, definitely so, and y'all won that one there. That was Thursday night, correct? Yeah. Yep. Thursday. Okay. I'm getting days mixed up. There's been a whole lot of racing in the past two weeks. So, uh, that was Thursday night. Won that yeah. one. It still ran decent on Friday night. And man, I'm gonna tell you what. On Saturday night, there for a long time, you and Jared Landers was y'all was putting on a show back there. I mean, y'all were running for what? I think fifth. I think it was at the time. And man, y'all yep. were putting on a show yeah. back and forth. It was Jared. I watched him in the B main, and he was really good in the B main. And um, so then when he came up through there and was alongside of me, uh, I thought it was Davenport at first because the cars are you know identical minus uh, minus number. the number. And uh, then I looked over and it was Jared. And um, you know Jared and I, you know, are decent buddies. I talked to him whenever we get down in that area. and uh, him being a, a modified guy and we have a lot that we can relate to each other and um man he raced me so clean you know a lot of, uh, there's been people that w- would tell you how wild and and out of control jared landers is but he was the complete opposite of that i mean he raced me so clean and um was um was a lot of fun that they're racing together and and not doing anything dirty and um you know, I, I think I thought that we had a really good car and we were both kind of trying to pace ourselves there for a little bit. And um, I got stuck behind Josh Richards probably 10 times in that feature and I just couldn't steer like I needed to. And, um, you know, I thought we had about a third place car and ended up running fifth. But still, all in all, for a crown jewel race to finish in the top five um, with what we got, I'm, I was still uh, super proud of my guys and, and uh, to go out there and get my first Lucas Oil win. and and finished fifth on Saturday at the Crown Jewel. That that um, I, it was still a great weekend. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Yeah, and that was that was awesome to see. Uh-huh. And I'm so so proud of you guys, and glad y'all are getting us getting it uh rolling in the right direction. Which I mean, y'all been in the right direction, but keeping it in the right direction when when all the adversity hits, you you could easily veer off that. And so I'm loving that. But moving moving off from that, just real quick, speaking of uh, our presenting sponsor, SRI Performance Stock Car Steel, I want to ask you a couple questions about them. How long have you been with SRI and Stock Car Steel? Oh, it's been, I'd say probably since 2000, I think 2010, you know, so. Wow. Um, 
10 years, you know, it's the, um, um, a long time. And those guys, obviously with, um, when I worked at all the cup teams and, and Bush teams, um, BFIP's brother, Eric Molino, uh, he would come in and service, uh, do the sales stuff or whatever. So I met him working in the fab shop there. And then, uh, BFIP's and I became really good buddies and, um, and that's how I got introduced into, you know, Fernelli and, and, um, you know, just being down here, um, they're so great for the, for the, uh, motorsports world in general and, and an important part of, of, um, all the racing around here. And, um, so yeah, it's great to have them on board and, and, I, we joke about me being grandfathered in because I've been with them for so long. So <laughs> hopefully they stick with stick with me and and um, help me out for years to come. If not, I'll just have to take it out of beef tips. <laughs> there you, I guess. There, there you, you go. go. Um, sticking on in real fast. What are some of the most common parts and pieces that you buy from SR or get from SRI? Um, obviously for um, on the on the stock car steel side of it, I mean, it's all of our uh, body panels and then bracing and all that stuff. But on the SRI side of it now, especially with them having the performance end of it, um, we get our fuel and uh, we can get some tires there if we need them. And um, they're really trying to um, get a lot more stuff that's specific to the uh, to the dirt world um, because I think Fernelli and, and everybody there has realized how big um, the short track end of it has become here lately. And um, even though that NASCAR was a big part of their market. Um, the short track guys are, are starting to buy a lot of stuff from them. So we get all of our, you know, brake components um, from them. A lot of our, uh, our fluids that we use for, um, you know, for the, for the car and, and then uh, fuel. Um, but yeah, they're really, they've really stepped it up here in the last couple of years with, with, you know, having more and more, things that we can buy from the for the dirt market definitely so and going into what you were just talking about brakes i hear there's been a little brake change on your car going with some stop tech brakes now yep yep brandy keen and has been uh one of my buddies for uh for a long time now and um Actually, uh, I mean, I'd like to say that it was a coincidence, but I'm pretty sure it's not. But as soon as we switched over, we uh, we started running good. Um, I use a lot of brake on, you know, on everything that I drive. And um, I don't know if that's a modified thing or not, but, you know, I, I struggled some with, um, you know, trying to make sure we had the right brake stuff on the car because of how much I used the brake. So. Ever since we switched to stop tech, um, we've been uh, had no issues, and and the car has been lightning fast here last couple of weeks. And um, um, like I said, all the guys at stop tech, and then uh, Gorsuch Performance too, they've helped us out a bunch. And um, Randy's been the been my main man there for helping me out and getting us the right stuff on the race car so we can go out there and put that thing up front. That's awesome, man. And yeah, Randy told me, he said, uh, man, everybody's wondering what Kyle's doing with brakes. He said, he, he, he's a master on the brake pedal and you don't hear that, you know, from our side, you don't hear that a lot from uh, people using brakes so much in dirt and stuff, but right. uh, apparently it makes you fast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. And, uh, um, you know, like the Chris Maddens and Scott Bloomquist um of, of late mile racing use a lot more brake than um sometimes they're willing to willing to tell you but um yeah it's it's absolutely huge and and the modified side of it like i use the brake i use both pedals to manipulate the car but the brakes are so important on the modified and um it took me a little bit to get adjusted to the field i was looking for on uh on the late model but um you know, you, uh, the brakes work so much better on a late model that I was almost, I think that I was over using them. I was, I was heating them up too much. So then if you, if you don't have the right stuff on there, you can create a lot of your own problems. Um, and then we put a superior product on there with stop tech and, and all those issues went away. And, um, and it really shows you, 
you know, how, how important everything is. And the late miles, everybody's so close. If you have one little thing messed up um, and don't have the right stuff on there, you can, um, you can struggle in a hurry. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Cool deal. Well, we're going to let you go here, and we sure appreciate you giving us a, a whole lot of time on here. So we kept you so yeah. long. <laughs> kept him all night. Man. Kept away from his kids. He just got home. Well, that's, that ain't right. We, like I said, yep. we sh- we sure appreciate you giving us some time here and uh, go win us a go win you a few big ones there and we'll get you back on here which i mean we'll get you back on here anytime you want but but go go win a few yeah. and we'll talk to you again yep absolutely i appreciate it guys and uh just really want to thank all the fans and we've had um multiple people step up and and try to help us out financially to, to keep going up and down the road and um the fans have been uh you know have been so important to me throughout my entire career and when they seen that happen at um, at Eldora, um, so many people have stepped up and went online and bought shirts, which uh, we were completely sold out of them. But I just got we're getting new shipments in daily. So if anybody's interested in any kind of uh, Kyle Strickler merchandise, you can go to uh, any of my social media, and um, there's a link on there for for our online store. So we're gonna have a bunch of stuff added here and um, trying to get a you know trying to get the fans. Uh, taking care of them, give them what they want, and and um, they're they're a huge part of um, of my whole racing career. And um, it was it was really cool after not being able to have any fans at Eldora to go to like Fairbury and then I eighty where where the fans came out uh, in huge numbers and really supported me. And and um, it was awesome to hear those cheers again for sure. So absolutely, thank you guys, and thanks all the fans, and thanks to everybody who's who has helped me along the way for sure. Well, thank you, sir, and we will uh, post links to all that ourselves. And like I said, we appreciate you coming on here, and thank you again. Yep, thank you, guys. Man, how awesome was that for Kyle That's Strickler. cool, man. Call Chicken Bone Alley. That is cool. Take the time out of his day. Just get back from a long, what, long two weeks. Two weeks off going on the road and um, the ups and downs of that and, and getting back and getting his kids and – Maybe get home and enjoy that. But he took some time to talk to us. That was really cool for sure. Yeah, and we, as we told him, we we greatly appreciate it. And uh, so cool. And uh, as I said, we're going to get him back on here regardless. But I'm uh, I'm cheering him on, hoping he uh, yeah get some wins here coming up in Brownstown this weekend. Oh, he's so. going he's gonna to be, uh, be a force to reckon with for sure um, in the next upcoming races in the rest of the year and from there on for sure but um tell you what as he said um breaks is kind of a big part of that uh dominance if you will right now yeah run up front definitely very big and you know kind of like we said we we don't really understand as fans you don't really pay attention to that you don't really think breaks you don't really think super late model you got to have breaks no you think sling it in the corner and go just slinging in the corner and go. You don't need brakes. You don't use brakes. You know, but uh, we was wrong. Dead wrong. <laughs> Dead wrong. Need a little help with the uh, brake technology and the brake uh, understanding them for sure. So this is cool. So he is calling us tonight here. And uh, let's go to the phone. All right, everybody. And on the phone line now, our second interview for this episode here. We, we, every now and then we get a, we get a couple. We do. They all tie together in this one. That's really tie, cool. This one ties together very well. As y'all heard, uh, Kyle talking about breaks and everything on there. And Randy King, well, he's on the line with us. Randy, how's it going, buddy? Good. Going good, man. Thank you guys for calling and, and uh, you know, giving me the opportunity to, you know, to file, you know, or, or excuse me, to follow Kyle, you know. And uh, so it's it's big for me, you know. Well, absolutely. Well, we do really appreciate you coming on and, uh and helping us kind of tie all this together for sure and helping us understand the brake side of things um but le- just aside of the brakes just having some contact and you know a lot of people over there so that's really really good to have uh <laughs> have a relationship with you so i look forward to that for sure but um but uh anyway so how's your uh how's your week been man that's going good you know we uh 
you know, just, you know, like coming off I-80, you know what I mean? And, and, and T-Mac went in, man, that was big. And we, you know, I worked with, with Tim McCready, Tim McCready, um, you know, over the last, you know, several years, I had the opportunity to work with him on, on the break side and, and other sides as well, too. So he, uh, he runs. Uh, he runs some of our products. Not the brakes. He, he's not on the brakes at this moment. But um, we do some other stuff, other components for him. So that was okay. that was big for RK Motorsports Consulting and and Gorse's Performance. And um, you know, and then seeing Kyle. You know, just seeing Kyle. You know, uh, have a good run. You know, the whole weekend. So when that when those kinds of things happen, it just it it makes for a good week for everybody. Absolutely. You know? and, um, and then, of course, you know, I can't, you know, the weather's beautiful here in Denver, North Carolina. So, <laughs> you know, but it's been going good, guys. Great. Good deal. Well, just so uh, everybody knows, I know I didn't say it right there. Randy, you were with Stop Tech Brakes and, like you just said, RK Motorsports Consulting. So tell us tell, tell us about all, all that right there. Just, just you know, what you do and all that. Well, I – um. So, you know, I started RK Motors Course Consulting uh, last year, actually, the end of last year. So I'm kind of new to, you know, doing my own thing. I, um, you know, I worked for, you know, PSC Brakes for many years and kind of got my feet wet with those guys and, you know, great organization over there. And, um, you know, but my, my main goal was to, you know, my background is dirt racing, you know, and, and I wanted to stay in dirt as much as possible. And, with some, you know, with other experiences, you know, I was kind of doing some asphalt and NHRA and, you know, even monster truck type of stuff, you know, and um, so I had the opportunity to, to do some stuff with, with stop tech brakes and, and stay primarily almost, well, a hundred percent in the, in the dirt world. So um, when you do the, the types of things that we do, especially, you know, on the brake systems, you, uh, you got to be there. You know, you got to be at the races and, you know, it can't be a deal where you're popping in once a month and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to find a, uh, an avenue where I could take, where I can just, you know, 100% in the dirt market and continue to grow in the dirt market, continue to, you know, to grow the, the brake systems on a on the late model car, big block car, you know, any, any IMCA, UMP modifieds and, um, you know, because brakes, are, brakes are, are one of the things everybody is, is migrating to now. So, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of, you know, went out on my own and, you know, I contracted with Stop Tech for, for a while and, and through Gorsuch's performance with Travis Gorsuch and uh, can't say enough about him, what he's, you know, done for me, kind of getting everything going. And, uh, but what I primarily do is, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a distributor on one end and I'm a technical engineer on the brake side on the other end. So okay. uh, I also dabble in, uh, you know, I do some Draco Springs for SRI performance and, and the Lion Eye Racing Supply out of Chicago. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm not just limited to the brakes, you know, I've got some motor components and, and some body parts and, and those kinds of things. So it's, it's, uh, it's all good for me too. My catalog is a lot bigger than it used to be. And, um, you know, when I was kind of nervous a little bit with, you know, the way the year went with COVID and everything and, but, uh, but everything's been going good. You know, I mean, everything's, uh, to this point, um, you know, I'm very pleased with the way things are going. So. Well, that's well, awesome, man. That, that's that's cool. That and, is. Uh, I'm glad you grew on that catalog because I hadn't even told you this yet, but I got a little street stop that uh, there's <laughs> <laughs> a hard to do some asking a whole lot of people on. <laughs> there you go. Hey, hey, we, we, hey look, it, it, you know, street stocks, uh, crates, you know, anything. That's the good thing about with Stop Tech, we have the the ability to you know pretty much fit every application. Um, and again, with Stop Tech, you know, we've got you know, 18 different calipers to choose from. And, and we've got, uh, and we're not just limited to, to one or two packages. So, um, yeah, street stock, you know, Hey, so look, when this is over, let's, let's stay on the line and talk a little bit about that and see if we can help you on that end. Oh, we'll do it. Definitely, man. Uh, well, anyway, before we get too far into this though, I got a question for you and, and somebody told me, well, it's on Facebook. We put, we put our thing on Facebook and Heath, mm-hmm. Heath Jenkins said, "Ask you about your K two pickup truck that you used to dominate with at Metrolina." Oh Lord! Oh <laughs> man! Somebody asked that question. Somebody asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> man, that was uh, yeah, I was back like in. Well, anyway, I, I raced for fifteen years, and uh, and that's kind of what got me into dirt racing. And um, I, uh, you know, just a little kid like everybody else. You know, my dad. He, uh, you know, I didn't go fishing. I didn't go hunting. He took me to the races, you know, and, um, 
So, you know, Cherokee Speedway, you know, playing in the pit area, you know, for year after year after year, I just uh, couldn't wait to get in a car. And my family always had a car. And, um, you know, we had Buddy Smith, you know, Buddy Smith drove for us a couple couple years and, and some uh, other guys back then. And, you know, and I finally got, you know, old enough to get in the car. And, um, you know, back in the 90s, I think 90, 90, 91 was my first year. And uh, started off in four cylinders, you know, and uh, actually, you know, not to, you know, I'm, I'm humble, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, you know, the very first year we were able to win the track championship and, you know, a little track East Lincoln Speedway. And, yeah. you know, for, for young kids, you know, to be able to do that, I mean, that's just, you know, now, now you want to, you want to do it every day and you want to go as far as you can in the racing. And, um, you know, we had a little four cylinder we're winning with and, speaking about the truck you know so you know winter time comes and i go down the shop and excited about the next year and the car is gone <laughs> and uh you know i'm thinking oh lord you know we, we just like i said we just won the championship with it so i'm like uh you know i'm gung-ho and and i'm like what, what are we gonna do you know and my uncle my uncle ralph he uh he's always he's always the type of guy that wants to do something different and uh and actually this was right is before the truck series even came around and uh so i always tell people look look when you've seen the truck series i was i was the first truck that ever came <laughs> right. there, there you go there you go <laughs> yeah and uh so but when they told me about it you know they're like look we're going to build a truck we're going to go to metroline and race we're going to you know we we've been running toyotas four cylinder toyotas we had the you know toyota engines and stuff and and then i've got this you know beat up s10 truck and we're going to build it you know and and just be perfectly honest with you i, I didn't want to do it <clears throat> You know, I'm thinking, you know, look, I'm not going to pull a truck to a racetrack. I mean, these guys are going <laughs> to laugh me out of there, you know, so I really wouldn't, I, I hated it, you know, the, the first few races. And, uh, but, well, Metrolina, if you guys all remember Metrolina, fast track, I mean, it's good racing and I wanted to race. And uh, so they, they, you know, they said, hey, if anybody builds a truck, you know, we'll give you 50 more dollars to win, you know. And uh, so, hey, we built a truck and, you know, went out there the first time and, you know, didn't do too good. I'm just trying to understand how to drive it and everything. And of course, people are looking at me cross-eyed and what's he doing and <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. I'm out there, you know, 24, 25, you know, four cylinders. And, uh, and, you know, back then, not to say that it's not big now, but back then four cylinder racing was like huge, huge. Yeah. you know, I mean, it was, uh, and, uh, so anyway, I, I remember like the third race in Metrolina, I'd, you know, come out of turn four, smack the wall, you know, basically totaled it, you know, and, we're going back to the shop and I'm thinking, okay, good. I don't want to do this anymore. And, uh, you know, I get to the race shop Sunday and the truck's already off the trailer. Mom has got chained around the front tractor, you know, pulling it on the tree, straightening it out. And he's like, Oh no, we're, we're going to fix this thing and get back after, you know? And I'm thinking, Oh Lord, <laughs> we're getting that uh, extra 50 was, bucks. <laughs> <laughs> do what? Uh, it's like, we're getting that extra 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, so anyway, um, you know, believe it or not, man. So I go back out there and, and I really never, like I said, I, I didn't even feel good going to the track. You know what I mean? And when you talk about Brian, you know, Chris's dad, man, what awesome guy he is. And yeah, we, we raced many years and, uh, so and they're very competitive, you know, and like I said, you know, back then, especially Metrolina, I mean, you could throw a blanket over the top 10. It's like racing Talladega, you know, and, um, whatever we did, and this probably happens a lot with, with cars, whatever we did to fix it. It just, man, that thing handled like you wouldn't believe. I went out there, long story short, I think I ended up winning 15 races that year. Uh, <laughs> to the point where, yeah, I'm getting protested every weekend. You know, always got a Toyota motor and a Chevrolet truck. And I'm thinking, Lord, I got a truck, you know. <laughs> and uh, to the point <laughs> That's I all they were mad at. They were getting all out that of... kind of stuff. And, um, but, but whatever we hit on, and I think what it was, guys, more than anything, is that, you know, a truck is a full chassis, you know, and, and right. you run against right. – you know, the, the cars that you can run back then, I mean, they're unibodies, you know, so there's a lot of flex yep. in the cars and everything. And, and I just, it just handled so well, you know, I was just getting through the corners better than everybody, you know, and, um, and, and really, uh, you know, I, I guess I ended up racing it for five or six years after that, wow. you know, and, uh, but it was, uh, it was a fun time. I mean, back then, you know, like I said, Metrolina Speedway, I mean, who, who wouldn't want the opportunity to race at that track with all the history there and, and, uh, but yeah, I've had, you know, me and Brian, you know, back and forth, you know, every week, you know, and, um, so, uh, I, I kind of, I still have, you know, I actually, we might even still have the truck, 
uh, at the <laughs> shop somewhere back in the woods. I'm not sure, but I know I got a couple doors and stuff like that. But yeah, it was good, man. That's kind of I really do appreciate the question that was asked because you know that's back and uh, that's back when I really got going and and uh, you know I'd race seven days a week if I could, you know. So well, but that's least... kind of what got me got me in, involved in, in the racing uh, okay. at the beginning. Well, at least now we know where the Craftsman Truck Series came from. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Randy brought it all about. <laughs> Randy started the whole thing right there. Started people, the whole thing. People well, started one, the light. one other little tidbit of information here that uh, actually the first time I talked to you, that I realized how small of a world it was. And, you know, you said you're up there in Denver, North Carolina, and we're down here in Florence, South Carolina. I found out me, you, and Sterling went to the same high school. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and, West I, you know, and, and cool. I did. I, I went there my senior year. I moved down with my brother. I mean, I don't really want to get into why. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, you know, was, uh, that's for I, another I, podcast. I, I, this way. I, 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 I wasn't like that much in high school, <laughs> so I had to pack up and, and finish my school somewhere else. It's because of that truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that's that, cool. that is cool, man. Well, what? Um, I, now that we know what got you into racing and what got you uh, passionate about it, what what drove you into uh, into brakes? Um, well, you know, I, and I'll tell you this, you know, when I, I my last race was in two thousand five, and um, you know, and I and I didn't work in the motorsports world. I mean, I was my background is uh, is quality management you know, in manufacturing and I've always been a quality manager for, you know, one of the big fortune 500 companies, carrier air conditioning. And I worked for them for 11 years and, and racing to me at, at that time was just, uh, you know, going to race on the weekends and then, you know, have a day job, you know, and outside of racing. And, um, uh, and I, cause I never, back then, I never thought that, that, you know, Hey, can I make a living in racing? You know, I, I was, you know, new family, you know, kids. And so I've done it as a, you know, I, I love racing, and uh, but I had to make money. You know, and and uh, I just I just didn't have an avenue other than trying to drive because I wanted to. I was going to be in racing. I wanted to drive, right? Right. Um. So you know, I I, I left Carrier, and um, you know, I went to PFC Brakes. Uh, I think back in 2014, and actually when I was hired at PFC, I was a continuous improvement manager. So you know, kind of coming in and bringing new programs, Fortune 500 programs to, to smaller base companies and, and helping them grow on the manufacturing side. And, uh, you know, and I didn't even realize. I didn't realize they were big in the motorsports. I was on the OEM side. And, and um, you know, after a few weeks there, um, the programs that I, were, I was bringing in, again, they were, you know, Fortune 500 programs. They, they, they really wasn't ready uh, for that big of a jump. Okay. And so we were going to, you know, kind of bleed it in and take a little time, maybe take a year or so to kind of get it going. Uh, but in the meantime, they had a, uh, they wanted to get in the dirt market, not to say they haven't been, but they really wanted to hit the dirt market hard. And uh, on my resume, on a special interest, I had, I used to race cars, you know, and so Don Burgoon, uh, awesome guy, he's no longer with us. Uh, but he basically is the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing today. And, uh, so for the, you know, for that year, I was going to, you know, get in the, the dirt market and, and push brakes. And, uh, and, and I'll tell you what, I, I remember going into his office and I was like, <clears throat> you know, he's like, Hey, look here, I'm going to, you know, you're going to get in the dirt market. You're going to do this, this, and this. And, you know, we're, you know, your first race is going to be Eldora. And, and I, at that time, I've never even been to Eldora, you know, uh, I haven't raced there, but, you know, of course I'm a racer. So I knew all about it. And I'm like, okay, right. wait a minute, you're going to pay me to go to dirt races, <laughs> exactly. you know, <laughs> but there, but there was a little catch you know, you have to understand the brake system and the brake packages and all that stuff. And look at that time, even when I raced, you know, a lot, like a lot of drivers, I really didn't know a whole lot about brakes, you know, so it was very intimidating for me at, at first. I remember, I'll tell you that when I went to Eldora, I remember coming home and of course, awesome race. And I got to <clears throat> reunite with some of my, <clears throat> you know, Brian Connor, for example, and Chris Ferguson. And uh, so I got to, you know, meet those guys again. It's been several years since I even I've even seen them or even been in the motorsports scene, you know. And right. and I remember coming home and I'm like, man, what an experience that was. And I'm like, you know what though? But I, I just don't know if sales is for me, you know, because of my background for so many years has been in quality, you know. And uh, so it was intimidating, you know. I mean, um, I bet understand the brake systems and what they really mean and how they really can work and and help help a driver and. Um, it's just, you know, year over year, over year, long story short, I never went back in the, in the, into the quality department. And, <laughs> uh, so, 
I, uh, but, but I realize that, you know, but I've got to learn what I'm doing. You know, I don't, I'm not just out there to sell product. I want to, I want to let the product sell itself. Uh, but I want to be more on the technical side where I can actually, when I talk to teams and, and, you know, be able to help them, uh, in their program. So, um, and that, there you go. And I've been doing it ever since. And I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, uh, for whatever it takes, I'll continue doing this. You know, this is my passion. I can't, it's crazy how the world works sometimes, you know, you, you, you're involved in it for so many years and then you're out of it. And then just, you know, blink of an eye, you're back in it, you know, at a different capacity, but, uh, I, I wouldn't change anything. You know, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't go back. I just, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, uh, and, and, and until the day it's all over, you know? Absolutely. Ooh, well, all right. Well, so let's get down to the, I guess you say the meat and potatoes here on, uh, on, on, you know, other, other than just talking to you and hanging out, let's, let's get you on here for while, while you're on here. Talk about breaks now that we're into it. First of all, Mm -hmm. you know, from a fan side that we're on here, what it, what is it? about breaks that you know because we from fan side is you know we think of the brakes in our car on a daily driver car you know basically all they do they slow right. you down and so what is it about brakes that are important especially on a dirt super late model well there's uh man there's so much you know and, and to your point you know like i said as a fan you know, when you, when, when fans, you hear them talking about breaks, you know, they, a lot of them chuckle about it, you know, and they're like, oh, we don't need breaks and all this and all that. And, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're one of the most important pieces of the puzzle, you know, and now that, you know, the, the chassis are getting better and, you know, the shocks and, and, and engines and all that kind of stuff. Now it's, uh, you know, guys are looking for that extra temp, you know, what, what can we do to gain, you know, more speed? And, um, and, and at the end of the day, using brakes the right way can actually help you with that. Um, so when you look at um, talk traction control, right? So traction control with brake systems, you know, the driver can actually do it, you know, with using the, the brake and the throttle, you know, at the same time. And uh, a lot of these tracks, um, especially in the national series, you know, they run at 50 to 100 lap races. A lot of the tracks, uh, you know, they're dry slick toward the end of the night. And so the drivers are really looking to get that center off drive and get that tire down the track and, and, you know, cause a lot of them, you know, are manipulating the throttle and it's like, okay, what can we do to stay on the throttle longer and keep the rear end loaded up? And, uh, and that's basically what the trail braking and dragging the brakes all about. Um, but when you do that, <clears throat> when you drive a car like that, um, you know, you're really putting the brake system, you know, uh, you're really using the heck out of it, meaning that, you know, a lot of temperature is created. Right. Uh, you have to make sure that you got the right compound in the car to be able to handle that. And, you know, lap after lap after lap, you, you know, you're, you're not boiling the brake fluid. So there's a lot of, you know, components that go in into in making sure that everything's, you know, stays where it needs to stay. Because I will tell you this, you can lose a race in a minute on brakes. And you lose the brakes, like losing power steering, it's hell. Oh, yeah. No, you know, and, um, but, uh, you know, like I said, the biggest thing is, is, is helping the driver understand <clears throat> you know, how, how he can manipulate the brake system, stay on the throttle. He can, like I said, trail brake, keep the car up, keep the tire digging. Um, and those are some of the things that we're able to help drivers and teams with. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and that kind of brings up a question that I have, or a couple questions. But one, we went to uh, Lancaster a couple weeks ago, and we sat in the infield. We backed up right to the wall in the infield uh, in three and four. And um, Brandon Overton was – ridiculous i mean he was just half a second faster yeah it towards the end of that race and it seemed like when he was going through the corner he was th- th- he was driving the car so smooth and was it seemed like he was all throttle a lot through well, that it corner seemed like he was slower through the corner yeah it seemed like he was so much slower but like me yeah. and david were talking you know he wasn't spinning tires he wasn't he wasn't losing forward bite center off and would that right. be a lot of him dragging brake through that corner to do that and, and I'll tell you what, uh, Brandon Overton, man, I, what an awesome guy he is, man. And congratulations for the year he's had. I, Absolutely. I, you know, I mean, a lot of things are happening in the car, you know, and um, we we kind of set the, the drivers sometimes don't even realize he's using the brake. Uh, we do a lot in the timing of the brake system to where the driver can basically just, you know, breathe on the brake. You know, not a lot of effort. 
he just basically has his foot laying on the brake and we're, we're able to throw about, you know, anywhere between 20 and 60 pounds on the rear. And, uh, and again, like you said, on the dry slick track center off, it's, uh, it's getting that bite. And, and, uh, I would, I would think that he's, uh, he's really good at that. Not, not only him, but right. Chris Madden, <clears throat> I mean, Chris never really never takes his foot off the brake, you know, wow. and, um, when you can get everything working that way and, and a driver can, can use every piece of that car, uh, just like Brandon, you know, I mean, he's gotten real good at what he does as, as you see what he's done this year. And, uh, but again, it's, it's kind of intimidating to do that because you're tra- <clears throat> changing your driving style. Right. So what we do on our end is we make it <clears throat> as easy as possible to where, like I said, they really don't even realize they're doing it. So, uh, but you see it just like with Brandon, how smooth he was, Tim McCready, you know, the, the way he drives the car now. And, and again, Chris Madden, um, that, you know, when you can use, when you can use your brake like that, right. Uh, you're able to get around, you know, you will, you'll, you'll go faster with the brake. And, and, and Brandon, that was probably a prime example. Uh, I wasn't at that race, but I can just uh, imagine what he was doing. If he's getting to the corner that good, um, he probably is, he probably is trail breaking a lot. Right. Absolutely. Well, the other question I got, a lot of people probably see it and a lot of people probably wondering what it is. Uh, we see it on a lot of Bloomquist cars, especially Scott, uh, Ricky as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you see them start a race, they sparking really bad going into corners. Um, what's the cause of that? So, um, you know, again, in the brake world, there's so many things you could do now. And uh, especially in, in, in late models, look, you get to the track, you unload, you pull out on the track, you know, hot lap session, qualify, whatever. Look, you're taking the green flag right off the get-go. And um, so you want you want the most friction you can get, you know, that's got the, the best bite, cold bite. So a lot of things, you know, everything's cold at that time, you know, and you want to. So what that is, it's a, it's a cold bite pad that, um, that just triggers, you know, it could be 30 degrees outside. You know, it just fires off the way it needs to fire off. And then when you, uh, so you're not, you know, like I said, he, he, uh, hot laps are qualifying, you know, you know, the brake system's under you now. Right. Well, that said, <clears throat> where you have to be careful is, again, when you run, you know, a hundred lap feature and you get a lot of green flag laps, you know, sometimes because there's a curve on that compound, you know, you get too much temperature and you'll start to fade the pad. And basically what that means, you'll start losing the brakes. Right. So there's a fine line into, you know, there's a, and then, you know, it's, it's, cause you know, do you run this pad and hope for cautions and uh, let everything cool back down? Or do you take the chance, it's no different to tires, you know, the tire selection, you know, you, you're either looking at how the track's going to change, how much brake I'm going to use, uh, is the tire going to come to me or go away? And, and, um, you know, so basically that's, that's what that compound does. It's a real good cold bite pad. And that's why you see the spark in the first three or four laps. And after some temperature gets in the disc, uh, you'll see it go away. Okay. And then, uh, you know, caution comes out, everything cools down and, and they get right back after it. So, but again, you know, the, the chance you take is, that, you know, a long green flag run. Um, it's possible if you're trail breaking a lot that uh, you can, you can get too much out of the pad and, uh, and lose the pad, if you will. Okay. Well, that deal. makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Um, and I got a question kind of comes off of that. Um, and this kind of bleeds over to the, I guess you'll say NASCAR world and everything else. I know you used to, and, uh, years ago, teams were trying to keep their brakes pretty much as cool as they possibly could, especially come, I don't know, Martinsville or Richmond or, uh-huh. and this even goes for, you know, dirt cars for that matter. Well, now, you hear them on the radio in NASCAR and stuff saying, get some temperature in the brakes. And you'll see them guys almost glowing a rotor the entire race. And, uh, yeah. What, yeah. What came about with that change? I mean, how, <clears throat> how's that different now? Well, I mean, it's a, you know, an asphalt is, it's, it is a total different world. I mean, in asphalt, I mean, you, you use the brakes a different way. When you talk about Martinsville, you know, again, you know, you're running a lot of green flag laps for them, and you're really leaning on the brakes a lot. And of course, they got a lot of ducking and all that kind of stuff, keeping things cool. And and glowing's not necessarily bad, but um, they use a <clears throat> there's a pad that you can use again several different compounds. They'll use a compound that's rated up to 1200F, you know, and because they know they're going to generate a lot of temperature, and right. um, so they want to make sure that you know they can continue doing that lap after lap after lap. So it's all based on you know, what, what type of compound they're using and, and, um, and, you know, again, how many green flag laps they're getting and, 
Um, you know, they they may give up some braking early in the race, but you know, as people are fading, you know, they're able to drive a little deeper in the corner, uh, able to stay you know harder on the brake in the corner, and and tore down the race. You know, sometimes, a lot of times, especially in asphalt and NASCAR, that that is the difference between winning or losing. So, right. but uh, you know, dirt's dirt's a whole different animal. But uh, but yeah, like you know, the glowing part of it, it's it's just all understanding that we're going to have this much temperature. Uh, we want to make sure we got the right, you know, compound <clears throat> and, you know, friction that's, that's in the car that's going to be able to manage that and handle it, you know, lap after lap. Right. Well, how about as far as a, a hundred lap race, just say a hundred lap dirt race. Um, after that race, are those pads and the discs and all is that you going to replace all that or how long would that last in a normal super late model? Well, uh, not necessarily. I mean, you can, uh, you know, we've, we've got a, you know, as, as everything else is, <clears throat> is, is gotten better, you know, brakes have gotten better as well. Uh, in the dirt world, I mean, depending on what, you know, we, like, like Larson, for instance, just touch base a little bit on him. You know, we've got a, uh, <clears throat> you know, a, a different weight of a rotor on the car and, uh, which is a, it, it's, it's a lightweight disc. And, um, you know, with that, you know, it's it's kind of like, you know, let's get all of it we can out of this race. And, and we got the best brakes throughout this race. And then, you know, hey, it's a throwaway and we replace it and move on. Right. Um, but then we have uh, we have other discs, you know, they're a little bit heavier. They can, you know, and look in the dirt world, you can probably, again, depending on, on, on how you're using the brake. Right. I mean, you can get away with <clears throat> pads and rotors. I mean, you know, 10, 12 races, you know. So, okay. Uh, wow. Wow. Um, it's just, uh, it's you know, like I said, no different in tire. You know, if you, you know, you're going to go out there, you want to get all the goodies you can out of the tire, but it's going to be spent after the race. Um, you know, there, you, you have the same opportunity in, on the dirt side. So you can go either way. You can save the brakes as long as you want. Uh, not as long as you want, but, you know, get a quarter of the season out of them before you have to replace stuff. So, um, but again, it's, it's like you said, it's all, it's all about how the driver is using the brake and how he's manipulating the, the brake system. Right. Well, um, like you said, we we spoke with Kyle Strickler a little bit earlier, and he well, <laughs> a lot of what he said was you know kind of when his domination, if you will, came on was kind of when he uh, switched over uh, to running to running your system and in, in, in your brakes and and uh, and having your help there. So um, I know it's got a lot to do, and, and I'm sure it's it's. Like he said, even running the um, a modified and learning the difference of having have it how to drive the late model, and depending on bra- on brakes and and learning how to drive the car, trail braking, and it, it, I'm sure that's a lot to learn. But um, seemed like Kyle has sure uh, come on quick and and learned that, and um, it's definitely helped him a lot. But uh, speaking of Kyle. Uh, Strickler and Kyle Larson. You just said you helped Kyle Larson with his uh, brake package in his car. Um, who else yep. are you affiliated with as far as helping out in the dirt world? Well, um, I'll tell you what. I do, you know, here, here's, the, here's the way I am, guys. It, it doesn't really matter, you know, when, when, I, when we first meet, what type of brake package I have. I have guys calling me all the time just for some technical support, you know, and, it's, and that's what I'm there for, you know, and it's uh, no matter what you're running at the time, it's a uh, you know, um, what can I do to help you? You know, what can I do to help you get the right, right compound and, and right master cylinder sizes and all this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, with Kyle, you know, one of the issues he was having, and again, this, you know, brake system is just a piece of the puzzle. You know, it's not everything, but when you got everything working, uh, of course you're going to get faster. And that's one, that's, that's where you see Kyle, you know, not to say it's all brakes, but it's part of it. Right. He was, uh, he reached out to me, uh, and I've worked with Kyle many years and is modified and, and all that stuff. So we're very familiar with each other and, and what our capabilities are and all that stuff. So he reached out to me actually uh, right before the Port Royal race. And, um, you know, he's like, look, man, I, I've got uh, uh, I've got some issues with the brakes. You know, I'm, I'm having to stay on three wheel a lot. And, uh, you know, three wheels good sometimes, but you really want to be on four wheel if you can. But the reason he couldn't go to four wheels is because he had a lot of drag in his right front. And, uh, you know, the, the, the caliper and stuff is locking up on them and all that stuff. And look, I, I'll tell you, if you have brake issues, you know, that's, you know, until you have them, uh, you know, you're not saying anything. But when you start having them, you see how it upsets the cars. So that's what Kyle was dealing with. He was, uh, and, and the, here's the problem. When you, depending on the brake system you have, I mean, there's companies out there that provide brakes, you know, and they provide everything else. I mean, they provide hubs and pedals and this and that. They're in so many different 
parts of the car, you know, they, uh, it's hard for them to, you know, focus 100% on the brake system. And with us, with Stomp Tech, you know, we're, we only do brakes, you know, so we're, um, and Kyle knows that, you know, so we're, we're putting 100% energy in the brake system. So, um, you know, he reached out to me and, and we started talking about some stuff, you know, that he was dealing with. And, and that's why, that's why the Port Royal race and Eldora and all that, you know, how it all come together. Um, you know, and, and me being on my own guys, I mean, here's the way I look at it. I'm no different than a driver. I, I do this for a living. I'm going to do it until it's over. And, uh, you know, Kyle's like, look, what can you do to help me? Can you, you know, I went down to his shop and we kind of looked at some things and, um, you know, and I'm going to help him all I can, you know, and it's right. like, I, I didn't, I believe in Kyle. He's, he's, you know, just a power. We could talk about Kyle forever, you know? And, um, so no matter what I had to do, what it cost, uh, what, what time I had to invest, I was going to make it happen. So even at Port Royal, uh, we had the front package on at Port Royal. I was still working to, to get the back package, but we wanted to address, you know, that right front situation he was having. So, um, uh, and then, you know, going into Eldora, and that's why it was so heartbreaking, guys. I, I mean, even <laughs> the Wednesday night before he goes to Eldora, <clears throat> you know, we're overnighting product to him. And, wow. uh, and again, you know, for Kyle as a driver, now he knows that <clears throat> every piece on his car is working the way he needs to work, you know. and um, You can tell it. And, you know, getting the system on there for Eldora and, and, and driving the way he did and, and, uh, and the heartbreak that happened at the end, I mean, it was it was tough. But I, but on the brake side, I mean, yeah, we, we, look, we want to win just about as anybody. And it was it was heartbreaking for us just like it was him. So, but just to be a part of it, you know, to help him, you know, get through a, a brake problem that he was having, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a win for us. Right. Absolutely. Definitely so. And it's so cool to to see him i don't know he, he, it's like i told him he, he's he's coming on as the as what i like to call the people's champ yeah he's a really cool guy and yeah. he's, he's he down like to earth a, and he seems like he's it's his own team and he's exactly. doing yeah that's, that's really cool and the uh, little team that could and is is all of a sudden jumping up there well and, the guy, teams. And, and guys like kyle and and you know like a lot of them i mean you know they're uh you know they're in it they're in, there's no going back Right. You know, this is what they do, and they're going to do it. And, you know, and I tell people the story a lot of times. Look, a lot of these teams, they pull out of their shop and their hauler. Look, they got a half a tank of gas. They don't even know where they're going to get the money to fill the hauler up at the first stop. Wow. You know, but they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. You know, look, 10-hour ride or 16-hour ride or whatever, and they, they're on the, they've been on the road for a while now. They'll figure it out, you know, on the, right. on the way through. And that's why, for me, it's so important. Not necessarily, look, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, be a millionaire in this sport by no means i'm just trying to make a living and be able to be a part of it so with that said uh you know anything i can do to help because i know the passion and the drive and everything these guys put into it you know i'm going to do i'm going to do as much as i can to help these guys so but um but yeah kyle you, like you said he's from his modified days and you know i know his dad well randy and uh, just to see him kind of grow and, and and how fast he's grown in the late model world you know, we want to, I definitely want to help him on the technical side, on the brake system to, to see him, you know, just to, again, to help him, help his program, you know, all we can help him. So really respect the guy. And, and uh, again, uh, you know, like I said, it, a lot of these teams, there is no going back for them. This is what they do. It's uh, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that, <clears throat> you know, that fans don't realize. And um, that's why it's, that's why it's so important. Look, buy a shirt, buy a hat. You know, Absolutely. all this stuff is going into the fund or the fund what they do. And, and look, we're, we as fans, you know, we go to watch them. That's what we look forward to every week. And, um, you know, so anything we can do as fans to help give back to because to, they're giving us something. Right. right. Um, I, I can't stress enough how important it is to, to do whatever you can to support, you know, these these uh, late model drivers and, and all the drivers across the country. For that, oh, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, like Strickler said, um, that 50,000 bucks would have helped them a long way. And um, I really hated to see him lose that race the way he did. Um, that's tough. That's, that's 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 hard to swallow that for sure. But he gained a lot of fans. <laughs> he gained a lot of fans and a lot of people watching him now. Um, and he's got uh, – seems like he's got his whole – everything about his car and his team – and his mindset, everything seems to be in the right place now. So, looking forward to uh, to to definitely seeing him succeed here soon. But uh, talking about the other Kyle, Mister Kyle Larson, the hottest, Long the, money. I'd say the hottest <laughs> driver this year. There it could be. 
Um, man, yeah, he can get, do no wrong, but one time, but he yeah. can't do no wrong <laughs> to get set up and get hooked up and in, into that. Um, I, I say exhibition, if you will, but it's really not. I mean, who's to know? Is, could it be more? Hopefully, it is. Um, but mm. the man, the, the man can drive anything in the world. Seems like on dirt. But um, how did that? How did that come about? And it was kind of quick from what we saw. Um, was this something y'all have been planning for a while and getting prepared for Port Royal? Well, uh, I'll tell you what. I, you know, to experience what we experienced, everybody involved, you know, fans and everybody. Look, that's that's a that's a once in a lifetime. You know, we're not going to see. I can't say it's a bucket list thing, but you know, it's going to happen. You know, type thing. But it's right. it's a once in a lifetime thing that happened, and and I don't see anybody coming out of NASCAR or any form of motorsports to do what, you know, to do what Kyle was able to accomplish. And and uh, that's hats off to to all the drivers and, and Lucas and World of Outlaw and late model drivers. I always feel like you got the best drivers who come from dirt, yep. and um, yes, and I will always believe that. You know, and but how that come about, man? Look, so Kevin Rumley, <laughs> you know, so look, anytime you get the opportunity to work with Kevin. Uh, I met him several years ago, back when he was, you know, with Davenport, and and uh, you know, back when they were blistering the the series. And uh, anytime you get the opportunity to work with him, you got to jump on it. And um, at first, I didn't, I had no idea Kyle was even even racing the car. Um, Kevin reached out to me. I think it might have been like three weeks before. And uh, and I've got a I knew it was I knew it was him because I've got a certain tone on my phone when when he he dings because <laughs> if it's two three o'clock in the morning, you're gonna answer that. That's right. <laughs> you know so. But uh, yeah, you reached out and said, "Hey, look, I got a project going on, and and uh, you know we're we're you know we're, we're in the timeline crunch here. And I had no idea even what the track was going to be, and uh, so I was like, "Hey, you know, absolutely. You know, he's like, look, I want you to take the brake system, and uh, and and one thing I really respect Kevin is that, you know, he's like, look, Randy, whatever you guys think, whatever master cylinder, whatever piston size, whatever you guys think, give me the big, the best of the best." And I'll, you know, be at the track whenever that, I didn't know when the race was going to be, but when it happened and, and basically be, you know, our brake engineer on this car. And, um, so we, you know, so imagine the, the, you know, how my stomach hurt over the last several weeks because I, <laughs> like I said, I don't know who's driving it. And, you know, and, I, and Kevin, you know, and this first time the six car hits the track and, um, you know, make sure that everything dot all of our I's and cross all of our T's and, you know, all that good stuff. So it was a, an awesome opportunity and, and nobody look, who would have thought not, not that, you know, look, he, you know, he's capable, you know, we all seen that. And, uh, but even driving to Port, Port, Port Royal, you know, it's like, you know, can we, can we really pull this off? You know, <laughs> you've got all the pieces to the puzzle, right. Drivers in the country. Um, and it's like, uh, so it was, you know, the whole weekend, uh, it was, it was kind of nerve wracking, you know, and, and, uh, on the brake side, I mean, we're, you know, from, from first time he hit the track. I mean, I remember talking to Kyle and it's like, uh, easy, easy to talk to, by the way, too. And it's like, Hey, how do you, after the hot laps, how do you feel like you're using the brakes and, and Kyle's on? He's like, look, I, I really don't know. You know, I really don't know what, what advantage I'm going to get, you know, in this late model. And, and, uh, you know, so basically it's like, Hey, what can you, know, you help me? And, um, so that's why we, we painted the rotors and so we can understand Cause my, my thing to him was like, okay, look, we'll tell you how you're using them. Right. You know, and, and we feel like, you know, how much brake you're using, how much temperature you're getting. And, and so that's why it's important to <clears throat> to take it to the next level and, and put some paint on the discs and, and understand what real time temperature they're running. Because, you know, a lot of times you come off the track, it might be 10 minutes before you get back to the pit area, right? And you're throwing the gun on it, you know, you lose a couple hundred degrees. So, right. but that's why it's important to, you know, to, to do the temperature and, and understand. And, and I will tell you this, just real quick. Uh, the, the night, he, you know, Saturday night, he, uh, I remember in the heat race, you know, it's like the, we're, we're kind of, we're going the disc on the right side and what, eight, 12 lap heat race. So he's really, you know, doing some, some dragging and some, and some, uh, trail breaking, you know, entering the corner. And, um, so we, you know, we, you know, look at everything and, you know, some of the paint's gone, but the good thing is it's gone on both sides. We know we don't have any dragging issues or anything like that. It's very consistent. Um, we actually made a compound change before the main event. Wow. And because, um, again, 50 laps, it might be, you know, it might have been green, you know, the whole time. And we want right. to make sure we wanted to make sure that, look, use your brake. We want you to use it all you can. You know, that's what it's there for. We want to make sure on our end, you know, so I'm saying about being <laughs> nerve wracking. It's like we don't <laughs> want to be the reason right. that uh, you know, nobody does, you know, and, and any piece of the car. And uh, so we, you know, just doing our due diligence, staying focused, you know, having Kevin lead everything and 
and and and Kevin, you know, the, and again, the good thing about Kevin is like, hey, you're here for a reason, you know, get it done. Absolutely. You know, and uh, you know, you know, and that's that's why it was so rewarding, you know, when when he won that race. And, uh, and again, you know, again, talking about brakes, we, you know, when you make a compound change, and we we did that because we wanted to make sure that you know we're not getting too hot, and we had the right compound in there that would be able to handle the temperature, you know, through the night of the race. So. Right. But uh, man, like I said, what a what a opportunity that was, and, and we learned a lot, you know, on the break side, and and I will tell you this, you know, on the on the, you know, he's there's we've got so many different combinations. He's on a combination that a lot of other guys aren't on. Um, master sonar wise, master sonars are huge. You know, what size to get? It's it's typically, you know, a lot of guys are accustomed to one inch, seven eighths, you know, but you know we we go beyond that, you know, to be able to to get the right feel for the driver and. Um, so there's a lot of things that on the technical side that you can do, you know, with the brake system, right. again, all in all, to be able to come out of there and win that race just for them. I, I, and real quick, I remember Kevin says something very important. You know, we're on pit road, right, before the start of the race, and a couple of crew members are like, man, my stomach's hurting. I'm worried to death. You know, and Kevin's like, look, guys, you know, don't worry. We're just out of our control. We've done everything we can do. Be patient. Enjoy. You know, enjoy the race. And, uh, and man, how awesome that was that's know? unreal well and that's another thing that i and, and, and you can tell us a lot better but after kyle won that race and we all knew and we've talked about it on the show that he had the best of the equipment he could get i know that, that car was the best equipment he could get but that whole field is pretty much consisted of the best equipment they could get so i don't you know a lot of people said well he had this and that or he ran Port Royal so many times he was so well there whatever but my you, my question to you is knowing how challenging it is to understand and drive a super late model uh to to win against the best of the best in Lucas Oil or wherever um what's your opinion on Kyle his ability to pick up and understand and learn a car well enough to go beat them boys like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredible. I mean, those you know everybody in the pit area. I mean, I, I w- was really neat. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, like Davenport man, and look, best driver ever to be behind a wheel of a dirt lane model, you know. Right. And um, uh, and, and and many more, right? And I remember after the heat race when Kyle Larson won the heat race, uh, the first heat race, I think Davenport was in, and he finished second. Look, Davenport gets out of his car, walks right over to Kyle Larson fist bumps and congratulates him and goes back to his pit stall you that's know cool. and it's like when that says it all right there i mean when you right. got a driver like davenport giving respect right you know to to larson because he understands the the difficulty of, of getting one of those cars around the track right. and look everybody you know nowadays look the chassis you know everything's evolving I mean, it's just everybody like you said has got very good equipment you know, and, and, um, and so it's just, it, to me, it's just raw talent, right? You know, it's just raw talent, no matter, it, cause it'd be very difficult for, you know, a lot of teams to, to get in a sprint car, right. To exactly. jump in a sprint car with the best equipment and, 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 and go out and win an outlaw race, you know, it'd be difficult, you know, and, and what he'd done was very difficult. So my hat's off to him, regardless of the car, the setup, the track, um, everybody who, you know, eats, sleeps and breathes dirt racing, understands and respects his ability and um but the guy is focused you know he uh he's very humble um all the guys in the pit area they all respect him you know there wasn't any you know they like kyle strickler i mean they all they all talked like they've raced together forever you know and that's cool they were even leaning on you you know communicating helping kyle and, and, and any questions he may have so the dirt world is a family world you know and we all like i said that was, that was once in a lifetime to see something like that happen to be a part of it mm-hmm. and um because again going into it you know it's like you know is can he really pull it off you know <laughs> can, it, can it really happen and um and uh, i did so it, it's just hats off to him and his ability uh, yeah to, uh, like you said to learn a car as quickly as he did and I, you know we it was a couple of test sessions prior but um how, how about that first night man him and jimmy owens you know i mean it was just <laughs> It was awesome. Just, I love it seeing him. Incredible to see him for the whole weekend. <laughs> yeah, he gave it all he had. That's for sure. That's that's awesome. I I, I love it. And um, I, 
like you said earlier, um, putting Davenport, and I'm not I'm not knocking Davenport at all, and he may be able to do just fine. But take Davenport and put him in El Dorado tonight, running against the best of the best in a uh, sprint car. I just I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we don't know. But well, I mean, I, I tell you what, I'd, I'd say about that. I would I would uh, I bet on him. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I uh, you know. Look, Davenport, like I said, man, he's uh, he's one of the best, you know. And, oh, absolutely. And, and he's and like I said, I don't think you're going to get any other NASCAR guy, just my opinion, you know, to come out and do what Larson did. Now, to jump in the sprint car for a lot of people would would probably be intimidating, you know. But right. when you, you bring it up Davenport, I think Davenport, to be honest with you, can get in the car. I think he can go test a couple times like Larson did, and I think he can be extremely competitive. You know the first event, right. just like Larson did. You Absolutely. know the late model world, and uh, uh, it's just you know again, it's just it's talent. It's stealing the yeah. car and and uh, understanding how the car works. And you know a lot of these drivers that are as good as Davenport and Tim McCready and Fergie and 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 Larson. You know it's really stealing the car that you just steal it. You know it's like Earnhardt yeah. said back in the day. You know you just steal it, see to your pants, and, uh, right. and get it done. You know, Absolutely. so I guess to answer your question, I, I would I would think Davenport would do extremely well. I'd like to see it. Absolutely, you know, I'd love to I'd see. Like, it. I'd like to see that happen. <laughs> yeah, Davenport's I think would be awesome in it. But I, I I tell you what I want to see is I know we've done it in the uh, midgets a good bit, but I want to see McCready get get in a sprint car. Yeah, yeah, I'd be, and you know he can do it. I mean, there's no doubt about oh, it. Absolutely. <laughs> you know he uh, you look at the history of Timmy, man. He's he. <laughs> He can get it done too, you know. My money's on him anywhere he goes, you right. know. And uh, just the history, you know, his dad and everything he's done to Big Block World and and uh, up in the Northeast. And that's one that's one cool thing talking about Timmy is that, you know, coming out of the Northeast, you know, one of the Big Block drivers down here competing in the in the late model world. I mean, man, you know, that, that's just that's unbelievable. You know what he's able to, to accomplish over these years and. Um, and you, you're never going to beat his victory lane celebration either. That's right. <laughs> exactly. I don't think go. nobody else will ever uh, be in Eldora victory lane with the mask completely over their face. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. That was awesome. Exactly. Well, that, that's kind of the question I had with you. Like you said earlier, how how much how much driver ability is needed in a dirt car, in a sprint car, and whatever. Um, driver ability – makes a big difference in in those type of cars so um nowadays a cup car seems like to me it's it's not really your your ability is not seen as much you know, it's limited by the car almost it's kind of limited by the car and 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 the money you can get to sponsor your car or whatever so you know a lot of people saw kyle larson as well you know he's running for chip ganassi and he's got a he's got a good car he's got a good sponsorship and he's just running mediocre um that's kind of what I worry about, and, and you know, the big talk now is that Kyle Larson may go back to uh, a, a Cup car next year. Um, don't know, but you know, m- my opinion as a fan, and you know, I'm not making the millions of dollars <laughs> that he would if he's in a <laughs> yeah. Cup car. But my opinion as a fan is, I'd love to see him continue what he's doing and and win 50 races a year. And you know, he loves it. I mean, he's got to. So, what's your opinion on that? What What would you say? What would you think would be the best avenue for him to take? Well, I mean, you know, like you said, money. I mean, unfortunately, you know, money is a big part of this world, right? And again, mm-hmm. unfortunately, um, you know, I always hate to see in, in any aspect of life, you know, money kind of dictate someone's direction or uh, what they may do or what they may not do, you know. And um, and that's that's why, you know, dirt racing, I mean, you know, in my opinion, is is where it's at. You know, that's the grassroots of racing. That's the I'm going to get it done. If you're if you're giving us yeah. a hot dog to win or a hamburger, you know what I mean. And it's, right. Uh, but I, you know, personally, I mean, I I just um, I I love what Kyle's been able to do, and and I'm I'm sure the fans are enjoying it too, and, and so is he. I uh, I'd I'd love to just or, or you know and and uh, run for points and and keep digging, you know, and because. Uh, because you know, just things like that will help grow this sport. And I, and I always tell right. everybody, I think we we talked a few times about this, is that you know, you know, the national series, late model series. I mean, it's kind of like NASCAR back in the '80s, you know, late '70s, you know, and it's it's uh, the way it's growing, 
and the personalities and all that kind of stuff. And that's one thing I, I you know, I'm not a huge NASCAR fan. You know, I really, you know, you're asking my opinion. I, I, I really don't think that you have the best drivers in NASCAR. Right. Um, unfortunately, it is driven 100% on, on finances and, and sponsorship. And um, so I, I just, I, I'd like to see him continue doing what he's doing, you know, and, uh, but what I would like to see more than anything is that over the next several years, as pay-per-views are getting huge, the numbers are getting huge, and and everybody that's involved is seeing that. <clears throat> it's you know let's get some big sponsors and you know we can get full-time teams and and all that stuff in the, in the right. late model world. And um, man, wouldn't that be awesome? Oh man, dude! Mm-hmm. Me and David talk about it all the time. I mean, they have a few live events on MAV TV, uh, which is on you know nationally televised. Uh, and that's awesome. I know they get good, good viewership on that, and they've got to. And you know, aside of that, you've got to have Lucas Oil TV. You got to have Flow Racing. You got to have Dirt on Dirt. Whatever. There's a lot of streaming services that you have to have and pay, uh, pay for monthly or whatever. But um, man, if they can get somehow or another get set up with a a a, a, a series, a Mav or, or or whatever, Fox, whoever, um, and be able to. Uh, and cover be able to cover the whole season live that well, would be I'm, unreal i'm hoping yeah. i'm really hoping with uh tony stewart's deal up there with uh what's it called the s s that little irock deal yeah the srx series or whatever it yeah. is um i'm hoping him going with cbs may open that door i'm well I'm they hoping. and they do run some cbs sports they run some late model stuff on cbs sports so yeah um maybe it's in the making i, yeah. I know it's grown uh, the, the, the dirt world, like you said, has grown ridiculously in the last five, 10 years. And, um, mm-hmm. I mean, you go to a dirt race, we went to Lancaster that's what I was fixing and to say, Lancaster. Dude, there was more, there was a photographer there that's been there. I think he said 20 years he's yeah. been going. He said he's never seen Lancaster that packed. It was unreal, uh-huh. man. That's, I don't think, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Volusia was that packed no. when we went in February. Mm-hmm. Well, if you look at, you know, dirt racing, I mean, here, here here's the difference, in, the, in my opinion, is that, look, you're getting real. It's all real. You know That's what I mean? Right. It's not, you know, you get big corporations involved, you know, now you got to talk a certain way, walk a certain way. You know, it's like, look, yep. don't do not do that. Don't change personalities. You know, that's what makes the sport, you know, and, and I think that's where, <clears throat> you know, dirt racing has got a leg up <clears throat> on some of these uh, bigger series because it's it's real. It's real people. Hey, absolutely. Racing with their heart you know, and, and not driven by the money. And, and, you know, look, when you, you know, a lot of times, you know, you get out of a car, you get interviewed, look, that's trick. That's pure passion. You know, let the guy be who he is. Don't. Exactly. And I think that's where, in my opinion, again, I think that's where NASCAR went wrong. It's like, you can't tell somebody, you know, you can only say this, this, and this, and I get it. I mean, you got the world watching, you got big sponsors involved, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's uh, let's be real. You know, we all live in this world and let's, and and we know what goes on and look, look, that's not, edit anything unless it is what it is and um you know i think that's what being a race fan uh, besides being in the, in the in the world uh that's what people want to see exactly. oh, absolutely that's what I people want to see i mean exactly. back in the day in, in nascar is kind of like it is now with dirt but you know back then you could mm-hmm. personalize with a driver you could you could you could understand a, a driver because because i mean you kind of understood their personality and you got to see their personality mm-hmm. Now you don't. It's just like a it's like a robot. Up well, there. and and also, and I don't. <laughs> I, I, did you see it, Randy? The um, ha, happen to see it. I know I told Sterling to go watch it. Um, on Flow Racing, they do that all access deal where they That's follow really a cool. driver for the entire day while they're at yep. track. When they were yep. at uh, Eldora. They did Davenport mm-hmm. one day. They followed. I don't remember who else, but they followed Kyle Strickler. Yep. Uh, the yep. day that you know the, the tire blew, unfortunately, but it was so real. It, it took you through the ent- his entire day yeah. there, and that was some of the best coverage. Absolutely, I've seen in a long yeah, just, time of it's a racer real, because like it was said. completely unedited. Yeah, I mean, and it was awesome, mm-hmm. and it was it's so cool to see Kyle like that. I mean, it's so seeing Kyle like that, but it's so cool to see it. Well, you can you know, see that perspective I mean, and be able to relate with it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, because you know, you're getting you're getting out there, and you're look. They're racing. They're not they're not racing to to appease a certain group of people, and 
they got to, you know, so look, a lot of, a lot of times they're like, Oh God, they're, you know, like they're worried, you know, and that I did see that. And man, that was awesome. That, you know what, when they interviewed Kyle after the race, you know, a lot of times, and I'm just going to bring up NASCAR, a lot of times when stuff like that happens, I mean, you get some passion from the driver and everything, but at the end of the day, you know, they, it's, it's, do they really care, you know, and it no. just should be flat honest, you know, but you've seen, you know, Kyle, this is his life. That's everything. Right. He's not, he's not doing it for the money. I can tell you that right now, all these guys are, are, are doing it out of, you know, pure passion and love and, and, um, and that was, I mean, even, you know, hell, I get choked up, you know, I'm, I'm sure oh, a lot yeah. of people got choked up when that happened, yep. you know, to Kyle and stuff. But like you said, it, it, re, being able to relate, that's, that's what brings the fans in. And, and, and that's, that's what Absolutely. everything needs to continue, you know, the path that that's the path that needs to be Absolutely. And if NASCAR, you know, <clears throat> can never get back to that. You know, if they can never get back to that. I mean, you see back in the day, <laughs> Daytona 586, 87, whatever. I mean, they're interviewing, you know, uh, the crew chief on, on pit wall smoking a cigarette. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Eat, <laughs> eating ice cream, <laughs> smoking a cigarette. There and you if go. you can ever find uh, Boone Briggs without a it cigarette is, in his hand, you're doing yeah, good. Yeah, it so. is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. But I, uh, but I, yeah, I, I think uh, it's hard to compare, you know, NASCAR because it's not really, uh, I'd, I'd go to a, I'd put a dirt race on TV anytime over. Hey, absolutely. Over, I would absolutely. That's where we're at too. And it's sure. like I, I've told Sterling before. I said, well, the difference is, you know, because because we we do cover a lot, you know, we we've tended to cover a lot more dirt on here than NASCAR and local stuff. I mean, we will cover some local races, but, but you know, we've kind of weaned off of NASCAR some. Um, but uh, it, it's we have figured out, you know, in 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 our years that I think the biggest thing that is NASCAR racers don't. They don't care where they finish, honestly. Well, it doesn't matter. Because I mean, they're getting paid the same thing regardless you of where they yeah. finish. Kyle and, Busch can make a million dollars, whatever he makes. A million dollars a race, whether he finishes dead last or he wins the exactly. race. And then, But you got yeah. guys like, just just for instance, Kyle Strickler, that he blows tire on the last lap. He lost a ton of money because of that. Yeah. And he wasn't real sure that he was even going to go to Fairbury or I-80. <sighs> Mm-hmm. And I mean, pulled stuff together uh-huh. at the last minute to go, and I mean that's where they, that's where it makes them relatable, right? Yeah, uh, you're you're 100 right. And like like I said earlier, it's like you know when you pull out, <clears throat> a lot of guys you know they have a, a tentative schedule, they have a schedule what to do, they would race every night if they could, but they they really they figure it out on the road, you know. And it's and uh, going back to Kyle, I mean, think of the adversity he goes through. I mean, look, so you lose that, you know, unfortunately. And then, you know, then he, what, he's going to Fairbury or whatever it was, and then he has a flat on his holler. <laughs> yeah. You know, for a lot of tech, a lot of guys, and he, he's experiencing it. I mean, NASCAR, look, they're not, they don't even know that stuff's going on. No. You know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, day living, and done. you know, and it's it's like, you know, a, a, it could be very easy to say, look, I'm done. You know, oh, man, yeah. this is just, yeah. you know, this is just too much. And then, look, then he goes and sets the track record. You know, then he, <laughs> yeah. then he wins at I-80 the first race. I mean, what's that say about somebody, you know? Uh, that's absolutely right. <laughs> it, it makes it. I'm telling you, man, it's unreal. But it's it's at the same time, like we like we told Kyle, it's it's so cool to see that and to see that determination and not give up. And uh, I mean, it'd be so easy to just say, like you said, just you know what, we're going home. We're not even gonna mess with it. But they just dug deep. They made it happen, and it paid off. That's right. And going. Go on. We could talk a whole night long. I swear we could about yeah. all this stuff. <laughs> well, this say this says this is definitely not the last time no. Randy Keene is going to be on here with us no. for sure. Randy's going to be on here quite a few times. I, I can see it. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, going to him. And before we sit here and talk all night, I, I know you got some dealings with a uh, with SRI uh, SRI Performance and all that, those those guys. Tell, tell us a little bit about your relationship with them. <clears throat> yeah, SRI, man. I, I tell you, I've, I've been in, involved with them at some capacity, one way or another, you know, for the last six, seven years. And, uh, you know, can never say enough about Greg Fernelli and, and the operation he runs. I mean, it's uh, it's family, you know, and and, uh, and that's one thing that I, I migrate to, you know, it's, it's family and, again, being real and passionate. And um, <clears throat> so I do, uh, you know, I have the opportunity to, to do some stuff on the Draco Springside. Um, I do a lot of my work, uh, up in New York in the Northeast with the, you know, the modified teams and, um, and just trying to, 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 you know, as I'm up there, you know, trying to bring SRI with me, you know, trying to, 
trying to get their uh, their catalog up there and and uh you know because we they're so big into racing and and of course the northeast and i'll tell everybody this look the northeast don't ever don't ever second guess these guys look you talk racing you talk family you talk shut the whole town down to go to an event every weekend it's huge you know <clears throat> and um so i get choked up talking about it but um <laughs> so i'm just trying to you know when i'm up there i'm trying to everybody who's helped me along my way and sri is definitely one of them Greg Fernelli, Jim Gall, Kevin Storms, you know, all, all these guys, man, they're, I'll do anything in, in the world I could do to help these guys. And, and again, the reason that things work, and I'll always say the reason things work, it's not because of money. It's because we have the passion and this is what we love to do. And you know what? Hey, the money comes along great. But that's right. The, the, that's where you get the best of the best is when, when it's not pushed by the dollar, it's pushed by the heart. And, uh, and that's what I do with SRI. I'll, I will, Anywhere I go in the country, whether I work directly for them or I don't work directly for them, I'll always say, oh, by the way, have you heard of SRI Performance, you know, and and because uh, they are a racing family, you know. So I so right now, currently, you know, I, I, um, I'm I able to, to do the Draco stuff for them up in the Northeast and, and uh, I'll continue doing that. And, um, and, and who wouldn't want to be part of an organization like that, you know. Oh, absolutely. And and kind of like you said, a, a racing family, you know, we first started this podcast uh, this year, uh, which like we said before, this is probably the worst year to start up anything, honestly, but um, <laughs> yeah. we, we, we tried and, um, and, and, and David reached out uh, to SRI. And and uh, he reached out to everybody. Well, absolutely, <laughs> he he reached out to a lot of people, and um, Sasha and all the guys over at, at, at SRI, they took a chance on us, and I think you know, kind of like, well, to me, and I, I picked with David about it because you know you look in you look on SRI's post, and they'll they'll um, they'll tag all these things, and every time you look, is is somebody sponsored by SRI winning. And so they go for the winners, and they pick, and they choose, kind of seems like, to me, uh, they surround their si- sales by winners, I guess you could say. So um, that's a good thing for us, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. But uh, but e- every single person we talk to um, has nothing but good to say about SRI and uh, and the good that they bring to people, and, and, and uh, product-wise, you can't beat it, that's for sure. Nope, you're right. It's uh, like I said, you you surround. Uh, you know that's why you know doing this on my own. I, I I the only way. Look, I'm not making it by myself, guys. I'm making it because of the people I'm surrounding myself with. You know, right. and uh, you know, integrity and 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 being honest and and uh, you know, and again, doing it out of the passion and the love for it. But it's all a big puzzle, right? I mean, it's it's yeah. everybody's got a piece, you know, and and it's finding that right organization to work with that everybody could feed off everybody. And then, and you know, then we're all successful, you know? Absolutely. So, and again, that's what SRI does. I mean, it just gives you the outlet to, to communicate with everybody within and, and everybody's on the same page and, and everybody knows their role, you know, Absolutely. and that's one thing you have to be careful with, you know, and, and when you deal with companies sometimes, not, not SRI, of course, but politics, you know, and um, and that's one thing I I veer away from. I mean, you you can't right. you never be successful when politics are involved. Absolutely. If you kind of know what I'm talking about, you know, really? everybody's got to, you know, again, do what you do and do as do the best you could do at what you do. And then you know, I'm not an engineer. You know, that's why I, I bring up Travis Gorsuch a lot. Gorsuch's performance. Travis is an engineer. You know, and Travis is the reason. Him and Kevin Rumley both are the reason that that I'm doing my own thing right now. And I can promise you this, I, this is the first time, you know, I was like, I'm going to make feel confident because I surrounded myself with good, loyal people, you know, that have the same goal that I have. And, and that's why anything I'm doing uh, <clears throat> to move myself forward, it's not me. It's, it's everybody that's helping and, and me get to the, where I need to be, you know. So, and I'm just fortunate enough to be, look, if I can go to, you know, just having an SRI on my shirt, you know, that means the world to me. You know, Absolutely. and uh, because I believe in them that much, you know, and have the stop tech and have the Gorsuch performance, you know, and and I'll tell you another thing. When I talk about surrounding yourself with good people, look, Earl Ramey, you know, Earl Ramey Racing Engines. I mean, look, the guy, you know, he's he's been there for me forever. You know, you know, I, I can't say enough, it, it, no different SRI trying to get them in the Northeast, uh, trying to do the same thing with Earl and his engines, and, you know, and, and what he's able to do. 
And um, and the thing about the Northeast, you know, those guys are they're isolated, you know, and they they're always, you know, I'm down here in, in the Mooresville area, and you know, they're uh, they're always trying to get an edge, you know, and and uh, what's new down there, you know, what what can you do to to help us, you know, what can you bring up here? So um, uh, absolutely. So again, it's 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 who you surround yourself with, and and uh, so everybody can be successful. Absolutely. Well, I know from what little bit that I've. Well, we've we've been talking what two weeks now, three weeks, and from from that little bit of time, I have realized that you guys, RK Motorsports and Solar and Stop Tech, uh, Gersich, right? Gers, how do you say that? Or Gorsuch, Gorsuch performance. Yeah. Gorsuch, Gorsuch performance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys are surrounded by. I mean, the the anybody running up front, y'all are there. Um, that's a lot to be proud of, definitely. Um. I, I I can't say enough about that for sure. But if anybody else, thank you guys. Yeah, absolutely. But anybody else that wants to to get in touch with you or uh, want to find out about Stop Tech Brakes, any, anything, um, what do they need? To, what do they need to do to get in touch with you? Um, well, you know, they, you know, on social media, you know, there's several platforms. I, I I'll be honest with you, I, I do have you know Twitter and Instagram, but I I primarily do a lot of uh, put a lot of energy into the Facebook world and. And uh, uh, so, of course, you can you can go to you know Randy Keene uh, on the Facebook page or RK Motorsports Consulting. Um, it's strictly you know business. And um, so yeah, and and, and again, I, I not only I endorse performance, even Line I Racing Supply and you know Ramey Racing Engines and all this stuff. It's it's look, you can do more with with more. You know, you could do more when again when you surround yourself with good people, and it has the same uh, you know goal. And, um, and that's what, that's the model that we've been able to create. You know, it's not me going out there just trying to get all, you know, uh, that ain't going to work. You're not going to do it on your own. And it, again, it's, it's surrounding yourself with the, with the people to get it done. So, uh, that means a lot to me when you guys say, you know, that we're in victory lane and, and we're working with a lot of good teams, but, but I'll tell you what, it goes to, it's not all product. It's, it's relationships. It's family. <clears throat> it's, uh, Absolutely. we all have the same goal. Nobody. The reason we're successful again, nobody has an agenda. Okay, we all have one common goal, and and that's why you see, you know, the these organizations are are successful, and uh, and we'll we'll put in the work just like the teams and drivers do. We'll be at the tracks, and again, you know, when we, you lose, we lose. When you win, you know, we win. We and we and you know, what? another thing is fun is we celebrate with you. <laughs> you know? That's right. So that's, that's, that's the, the best part. Thing. You know, it's it's we all win together. That's right. Well, that that means a big to me. That means everything is, you know. You don't just sell parts, uh. You don't just sell brakes. You're there. You're there tuning on a car, doing whatever you can to get the best out of of, of the car you can, and that's got to mean a lot to to the guys. And 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 I think that be that's got to be a big selling factor to me. Yeah, definitely. So. You know, so oh, yeah. Uh, I yeah, hope everybody a lot knows of trust that. And- and just real quick, I mean, it's like like me. I met my wife at a race up in New York and, and introduced to her by a driver, you know, Brian Berger, you know. And it's like, uh, so everybody, when I say family, I mean it. You know what I mean? And it's uh, absolutely. Uh, so it's uh, and I and I can't say enough about you know all the teams up in the Northeast. I tell you what, guys, and that's what I hope maybe this can can do for you guys too in your podcast is is get a different perspective, different you know absolutely. in the Northeast. You know, McCready's from that area and. A lot of drivers are, are filtering out of that area, and there's a lot going on, you know, Stuart Friesen and, and all these guys. So there's another outlet for you guys to kind of get up and, and, and dabble in a little bit, you know. Absolutely. Definitely so. We're going we're gonna to have to uh, use our resource here and get yeah. some of these big block guys well, on there. Hey, just like, just like we just said, we surround ourselves with great people. So that, Randy, that's what we, we have to do. <laughs> you right here with us, bud. We keep picking out the great people on Facebook and send them friend requests and hope they accept it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can send them a message. <laughs> hey. Oh man, yeah, I hear you. And, then, and like you said, if you got, you know, just measuring, you know, you look, you know, what you're doing, it shows in the data, you know, and and uh, you know, just keep keep being passionate and don't let that dollar drive you. And exactly. uh, like you guys, man, I I I think you, you know, like you said, starting anything this this year was was tough, but you know what, you're doing it for a reason, and it's happening for a reason, and you're meeting just like we met. You know, you guys are. It was awesome to meet you guys, and man, I, I've been, I've really enjoyed being on this show with you guys. I really appreciate it. Absolutely right, man. We appreciate you coming on here, and uh, 
we're definitely gonna have to have you back on here and uh i'm gonna tell you what i i i, I know you've been in motorsports a long time uh, long enough anyway that we know you know brakes for one thing but you know a little bit about everything so absolutely uh, if you're good with it, uh, Randy's now going to be our tech guy. So when we have questions, we know who to ask. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and the good thing, look, if I don't have the answer, we'll get it for you. That's <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly right, well, man. Cool, Let's... man. Well, again, we love having you on here. This has been so much fun, and we're going to have to have you back. And like I said, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll – uh you know, our next events, uh, just to put it out there, you know, we're going up to New York. Uh, it's the October fast uh, for the big block modifieds. It's six races, six nights, and six different tracks. Wow. Um, <clears throat> actually, we're going to be doing some stuff with SRI out there. It's pretty exciting and doing some awards and all that stuff. So uh, that's really? kind of, you know, we're kind of in the works on that right now. And, and uh, something will be coming out shortly with that. And then, you know, from there, going right over to, to Portsmouth, you know, the 16th and 17th. Uh, try to get that hundred thousand dollars and then hopefully on to the world finals you know i i, I guess hope. i'm not sure if you guys heard or not but i i, I don't maybe i've seen something where it, it probably will be held in charlotte now capacity might be limited or whatever but you guys tell me i don't know if you heard anything or not about it but i hadn't heard a thing uh, we, we've been looking ourselves yeah we have been for sure so i hope that's true for sure so uh yeah. looking forward so, to that definitely looking forward to it man well awesome so and, and don't don't ever hesitate guys uh look when i'm at a track uh you know portsmouth wherever up there in new york these six races look shoot me a text give me a call we'll do some we'll do some live at the track stuff for you and get some drivers on the phone for you and and get that real time answer you guys are looking for <laughs> <laughs> most Absolutely, definitely man that'd be well, sweet. cool well everybody out there uh, like i said for randy Keene. Look him up on Facebook. Look him up on, uh, well, Facebook mostly. Like yeah. I said, he stays on Facebook. RK Motorsports Consulting. Yep. And Stop also check breaks. out them Stop Tech, Stop Tech Breaks there. And uh, like I said, we appreciate you coming on here, man, and we can't wait to have you back on. Awesome, man. Thank you guys very much. It was, it was, it was awesome. I really do appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Absolutely awesome. Randy King calling us there. Yeah, he's an awesome dude, man. He's cool he, uh, dude. Well, you know, kind of like I said, he, he, he we first started this deal. SRI kind of took took a chance with us, if you will, and and um, giving us their backing. And and I think uh, I think Randy's all in to help us too. Um, so that's really neat for sure. And 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 be able to understand more of. The background of super late models makes a big difference, I think. It definitely does. Most definitely. Well, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, it's been a long show. Okay. It has been. It's been a pretty it's a pretty hefty show. So you got anything else you want to add to it? Not much other than uh like I said, make sure y'all go check out SRI Performance Dot Car Steel and Draco Springs. Also check out Checkered Race Hub is, is completely racing social media. And uh, y'all will enjoy it. And um, definitely uh, go check out, like I said, RK Motorsports Consulting and Randy Keen over there. Make sure y'all pull on, pull for uh, Kyle Strickler to High Side Tickler. Go check them all out, like their pages and all that stuff. Absolutely. And also uh forward bike. Getting cold. Do I need y'all a hoodie? Getting cold. They got some cool hoodies. Absolutely. Go we'll check them out. And uh I don't know, I think that's about it. Yeah, we ain't gonna hold nobody up for too much longer. So uh again, we really appreciate everybody listening. Thank you guys. Uh again, Kyle Strickler for coming on, taking your time. Uh Randy King, really do appreciate it, bud. Uh Look forward to the next time. Definitely so. So, uh, anyway, I'm about four in at this point. So, uh, I think I'm done. <laughs> Later.